Can't wait for Friday night under the lights. We're about uh, 10 minutes away from kickoff and uh, today's pregame report. Proudly brought to you by Minds Eye Communication. Over 25 years of marketing on Nantucket. Thanks for all your help and, and thanks to all of our sponsors. Dick, the Whalers coming off a, a loss last week to Mashby. Uh, 28 to 6 was the score, but really not indicative of the competitiveness of that game. You know, it was 8 6 going into the fourth quarter. Uh, anything you're looking for from offense or defense to, to really improve on? They, they, they need a bounce-back game. Uh, Mashpee's a tough opponent, yeah. and as you say, they stayed with them for more than a half, fell apart in the fourth quarter. But they're playing Norset, a bigger school who's 0-2, but they've played two big schools too in yeah. Pembroke and Hopkinton. So it's, it's a must-win game for both teams here, and uh, Nantucket's stepping up again against the bigger school. So uh, I think their offense is going to be a lot quicker than Norset. Maybe they get a few points that way. Yeah, and special teams have also been uh, quite improved. Obviously, the do-it-all guy, Justin Blois, does the kicking and punting. Uh, he had a huge punt last week that they downed right at the two-yard line and uh, really set up the defense, set up their only touchdown of the game last week. And uh, I got and uh, I got to think that uh, opened up the offense a little bit. You know, I mean, they got to get those guys, J.J. Bennett and Blois and Baden involved in just about every play. I, th I think the uh, the middle of the line is not the area they want to run. Yeah. Uh, you have to use it now and then to keep them off balance, but as you say, get the special team guys involved, the special outside plays, and I think their speed will get them, get them in the... In yeah, get them in some space, you know. So we'll see how it plays out. Obviously, uh, execution is, is what uh, Coach Joe Perry has preached, and we actually uh, are fortunate enough to have uh, our Coach's Corner interview with both coaches. We uh, got to uh, Joe Perry earlier in the week and uh, also caught up with Nauset coach Bruce Strunk. That'll be coming up right now. And, uh, as, uh, as you and I were chatting here before the interview, uh, it's been a couple weeks since we've seen you here on the Coach's Corner. Can you give us a quick recap of uh, the two games, uh, Dennis Yarmouth, a victory, and, uh, of course, uh, last week uh, a little disappointing loss to, uh, to Mashby. Um, uh, what did you like? What did you look to improve here this week in practice? A lot of things going on. Uh, we got some, some injuries. A little bounce back. Um, Ian Williams will probably be out with a, with a thigh injury. Yeah. Uh, working a quarterback situation should, should be a little bit more productive this week. Um, running the ball, throwing the ball should be a little more productive this week. Good practices. We'll see. Everything goes through Mashby. Every coach knows that. <laughs> Michael Jackson's hit. Song the man in the mirror. Where Uncle, it was yeah. Uncle in the mirror. You've done what it takes just to be to be the top dog. Um, I'm sure Mashby, you know, great program. Always, always has has been. Um, yeah, it's one of those things where you you get knocked down. Everybody gets knocked down, but it's how you get back up yeah. and get back. Exactly, up. exactly. Um, and and it seemed like uh, you know, again, for three quarters, right there. Um, but, right there. Uh, in the unfortunately, day. the game is four quarters. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, and no doubt we had, we had some great players. Yeah. Anything uh, you saw during this week of practice yeah. that uh, really stood out and uh, you'll be looking to uh, obviously execute on game day? Oh, we're going to definitely bring up the offense, put some points on the board. Uh, we had a lot of drop balls against Mashby, so we're going you know, to have to catch the ball. we got some, some dynamic receivers, JJ and Makai, and you know, a lot of guys can catch the ball, but we have to put it in and, and, and move the chains. Yep, yep. Well, as you as you have said, preaching execution, got to get it done on game day. So let's uh, let's game, hope that happens. Day. Let's hope that happens here Friday. We show, um, yep, we show up on game day. We'll be ready. And yep. so you mentioned Ian. Also, uh, yeah, Ian. Ian had a, something going on with the spy. He's going to go have it checked out yesterday. Uh, he hasn't suited up this week. Well, Coach, thanks again for the time. As always, best of luck Friday night. We're looking forward to a, a great game uh, against the Warriors of Nauset. And uh, speaking of Coach Strunk, we actually uh, did get uh, to catch up with him as well. So we're going to uh, sneak over and uh, continue our Coach's Corner here on NCTV 18 as uh, we get a little insight from uh, the new head coach of the Nauset Warriors, uh, Coach Strunk. Again, thanks very much, Joe, for your time and uh, best of luck here. Uh, let's take care of business here on the field, as you said, against the Warriors. And we would like to welcome Nauset Warriors head coach Bruce Strunk 
to the NCTV 18's Coach's Corner. Again, Coach, thanks for taking the time and uh, you know sharing some insight from uh, the NASA Warriors. Happy to have you guys uh, come across the pond here for a Friday night under the lights. Yeah, and I'm happy to be with you. Thanks very much. Uh, can you just give our uh, viewers a, a quick uh, history of your coaching experience and uh, how you landed uh, right at uh, Nauset, um, just in case we don't uh, don't know? Yeah, um, I was a high school coach for 28 years down in Maryland. And uh, five years ago, I moved up here with my family. Um, we had some family who lived on the Cape already, and uh, there was an opportunity. So uh, we made the move. And uh, there you go. And you guys had a very successful run down in Maryland. I, I did a little inquiry and uh, you guys won a couple of championships down there. Um, yeah, we, 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 we won some regional champions, some county championships. Um, we were state finalists. Um, you know, we, 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 uh, we had a good program down there and uh, yeah, yeah. Um, had a good, great group of kids. There you go. That makes as, do, as I do at Nauset, I have some great kids up at Nauset as well. So, you know, how does this team compare to, to some other teams? And uh, again, give us a little recap on uh, your first couple games. Yeah. So we're a very young team. Yeah. Um, we actually start four freshmen. Okay. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of it's been going around and I don't know if Nantucket was hit with this. You guys are a little isolated. Um, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of teams on the Cape and off Cape around the state uh, are really low in numbers Yeah, uh, because of coming back from COVID. We have 12 players who decided not to come back out for the team this year. Yeah. And uh, so our numbers, we, it, we really took, it really took its toll. We have uh, 36 kids, I think on our yeah. team, entire team in our program. Um, and which is unfortunate that we, you know, some of our freshmen were first into playing right, right. away, but, but you know what, they're, they're developing each and every week. You know, they might not be where we want them to be. Um, but they are improving and, uh, you know, it's a great group of kids. Um, you know, we, we scrimmaged a team early yeah. on that are used to having 90 kids in their program wow. and they're at 47. Wow. So, it, you know, it's, it's, it's happening around the state and, yeah. uh, and it, it's already tough for where we're located to, yeah. to have a lot of kids. Um, there's a lot going on, on the outer Cape and, um, but Hey, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. We, we, we're, our kids are, we're able to have a season. And um, um, like I said, a great group of kids. That's great. Yeah. I mean, it's always a challenge. As you said, we are isolated out here to get kids to come out for any of the sports. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, football is, is probably the most challenging as far as, you know, it's physicality. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, again, I said a lot last year, we were just happy to play period. Didn't matter what, what was going on. Uh, I know right. mom boy, you know, they, they couldn't even put a varsity program together this year. So that's kind of, kind of where it's at, but, uh, you know, speaking of your players, uh, give us a couple of guys that, uh, are, are, uh, shining for you kind of keys, uh, that, uh, our fans and your fans could be looking for. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have, I'm sure I'm going to leave somebody out, but, um, <laughs> our quarterback free yeah. safety, Dylan white. Yep. Um, he's done a great job this year, stepping up. Um, you know, he, he, he was a receiver last year and this year he, he is our quarterback and, yeah. he, and on the, and on defense, he quarterbacks the defense. There you um, go. So, um, he's done a great job. Um, a couple other guys, um, on defense, um, Corey Vendetti, our middle linebacker, yep. Duncan, Duncan Lowry, our middle linebacker, um, and um, uh, Logan Julian, our outside linebacker. They've, they've done a good job, and each week they're... We'd like to welcome you back to live coverage of your Nantucket Whalers right here on NCTV 18. Thanks to both coaches for shedding some insight on our NCTV 18 coaches' corner. And, of course, this live broadcast is made possible in part by these valued island businesses. As a proud sponsor of Whaler Football, they promote the visual media arts on Nantucket's community television station, NCTV18. And we got to give a special, special thanks to our key sponsors, Minds Eye Communications, Mannequin Marine, Eight Arms Chef Services, Nantucket Bank, William Ravis Real Estate, and Dune Restaurant and Bar. And we are just about ready for the coin toss. 
and uh, we are uh, awaiting the toss itself. Dick, you've got an eye down there. I got an What's eye down there. Like? The coin is in the air. Nosset has called it, and let's see who won. Looks like Nosset has won. They will probably defer. It was interesting last game with Dennis Sharma, but they deferred and didn't take the win. Didn't take the win, right. Looking at the win so. tonight, there's a little bit there, but I don't think as much as the uh, DY game, yeah. right. But the, again, they are... So they uh, Nosset is receiving. They will have... It really isn't a win. Looking at the flag over there. It's uh, a little bit to the left, so Nantucket will have a good, strong kickoff here. They should have a good, strong kickoff again. Justin Boyce, he's got a leg, so it should be uh, not the, as effective. Win or no win, he's going to boom He's going to boom it, that's for sure. And uh, we are just about ready for football. Whalers fans, are you ready? First Friday night game of the uh, year. We mentioned that. Uh, it's not time for the lights yet, but it will be. But we, we were looking at rain most of the day being broadcast for now. But, but we're going to have the national anthem now. Yeah, we're going to listen in to the national anthem. A great uh, rendition last game. As always, and, uh, Nantucket High School would like to remind all those who are present today that they are expected to show the utmost respect for game officials, coaches, athletes, and their opponents. Please cheer appropriately in a positive and supportive fashion. Thank you for your cooperation with this and enjoy the game. Also, please know that the use of electric bikes and scooters are prohibited on or around any of the Nantucket public school fields. I better hide my electric you bike. Then. You should. I know. Bikes, <laughs> Got an eye on Don't get us in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good sign when the helicopter's coming in. Well on campus of the Nantucket Public School. Thank you for your attention to this matter. It is our goal to keep all attending tonight's game safe and abiding by these rules will help us attain this. At this time, we ask you to please rise and remove your hat for the singing of our national anthem. Ready Tonight's the anthem will be sung by eighth grader Madison Kumo. An eighth grader right. singing Madison. I didn't get the last name entirely, but Madison. Eighth grader. Eighth grader. I could never do that when I was in eighth grade. When I was in the eighth grade, I think I was singing the jingle to the uh, Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> <laughs> that was my extent, though. Can you still sing the jingle? I, 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 I Please could. don't. Please I, don't. I could. I could. <laughs> so it, as we some, noted. Somebody would have to give me a, a little uh, reward money to get, ah, get yes. me to do it. Or maybe, like a little or maybe an adult beverage. It's two, I think. <laughs> They'd have to give me two as well to, hear, <laughs> to listen. To listen. Yeah, so. 
As ah. noted, the Whalers will kick off on screen from the right to the left. A little bit with the wind, but it is kind of swirling around here, I'll be honest. Uh, and again, Justin Blois doing the kickoff. He will not uh, need any assistance. This should go deep into NASA territory. 33 is the deep back, but I think Justin could get it over his head. I, I'm, I think the over and under, now they're backing and up a, a few That feet. is a freshman back there. Again, uh, a lot of freshmen, uh, as we noted in uh, the coach's corner from Bruce Strunk's team. And uh, he has got a young squad, so we'll see if the experience that Nantucket has pays off. And here is kickoff. Deep kickoff, just about the goal line, out to the 10, 15, 20, Whoa. crushed inside the 20, almost a deep cleaner. Huge, huge hit there, huge, yeah, the, the kid was running tentatively, he can't run tentatively, but that back guy, you're going to run fearlessly, a little tentatively coming into it, and uh, he got taken down hard. That'll get the boys fired up right away. So that took all of five seconds, but uh, Justin, you know, almost got it into the end zone. The kid did back up at the end there, yep. so it didn't make it over his head. First and 10 at the 17 yard line. Nasa coming out in a shotgun formation, single setback, handoff up the middle and a nice little hole falling forward for about four yards. Yeah, Nantucket uh, closed the hole. Was, there was a big hole there at the beginning, but they closed it in a hurry, and uh, they did what they want on first down. And maybe they give them five there, second and five coming up for uh, Noasa, as you say, running out the shotgun. Helicopter going overhead, not a, a good sign not a when you hear, a, hel when you hear a, hel a helicopter going by. Once again, shotgun formation for Noasa. Two wide receivers off to the left, and it is a pass. Left-hander swinging it out, overthrown. And that is Dylan White. He is a junior left-handed quarterback. Coach Bruch strung very high on him, and uh, he's got quite the arm, but overthrown, maybe a little excitement here on his first pass attempt. 11-13 to play now, and Nossett will face its first third down, third and five. Jeremy Cass put a lot of pressure on him that time, and I think that got the ball out of his hand sooner than he wanted. Uh, overthrew. I don't know if the man was open anyways, but uh, he... You don't want to throw the ball in the middle of the field like that, so he got away with one there. Yeah, fortunately it was over everybody's head. So once again, shotgun formation for Dylan White, and he will hand it off. Oh, and immediately stuck in the backfield, probably a loss on the play. That will bring up a fourth down. So Noss is going to have to punt the tackle, here. Ryan Downey. So the first series is what the Nantucket defense wanted, three and out, forcing Nasa to punt. And this is one of Nantucket's strong suits, as we talked about, getting uh, these two young boys into the uh, offense. Number one, Justin Boys. Number two, Micaiah Baldwin. They, either one of them can take it all the way at any time during the game. Yep, a, a punt return for a touchdown by Boyce in the DY game, and here's Bodden across the 40, 35, 30. He's off to the races down the sideline. Finally run out of bounds, but a fantastic start. We have a flag, flag down, however. Flag down up near the 43, so that'll probably bring it back across yep. midfield. Not a good sign Ball when you're running back a punt or a kickoff when a flag comes out, because it's usually on the offensive team. So but Nantuck once again, electric return by Baden right off the bat. You could see him weaving his way through the defense, untouched for quite some time. Get him in some space. I used to play a lot of pinball when I was a kid. Uh, it's almost like a pinball game. Yeah. When, when either one of those two guys get going, they're in and out, in and out, going around a lot of people. He needed one more cut. He would have brought it back all the way across the field. All for not, though, but uh, Nantucket will get uh, decent field position. They had much better if the penalty didn't occur. So Nantucket will begin its first series of play here in the first quarter, and we want to thank our first quarter sponsor, Nantucket Bank. Nantucket Bank, a proud sponsor of Whaler football. That shotgun formation for Nantucket as well, and it'll be a pass on first down. Looking deep, tip, pass, and incomplete. In on the play number 52, that is Raven Bennett. Great name right there that got the tip ball 
Uh, Carlos Aguilar trying to get it deep. And yeah, good to see him back on the field. He had a little back injury against D.Y. And uh, they were looking to go deep on that play. Yeah, first down, uh, trying to catch him asleep, going down the field. But a lot of pressure, and it's like it's going to hold up a little bit better than that, give him yeah. the time. Aguilar with a single setback once again. Two wide receivers, and he'll hand it off inside. Oh, a high tackle, but getting away with it. Once again, Bennett in on the play. And... Uh, he went high with the tackle and I think a loss of four. I think what saved the penalty was he had his hands on the shirt. If he yeah. didn't catch the shirt, I think they would have called that if he had all helmet or a shoulder pad. But he had his hands on the shirt and uh, gave Justin a good pop and did drag him down around the uh, neck area. But Raven Bennett, a junior linebacker and defensive end, in on both Offensive plays for the Whalers, and now they face a third and long, and it's going to be another pass, and Aguilar has to scramble. He's able to get it out. Ooh. Pass out. Bennett, incomplete, double covered. And he's hurt, I think. He got and hit high. Again. He had two guys pulling him down, and then the third guy come in and lowered his shoulder, hopefully just in his stomach area. But now he seems to be shaking a shoulder. Usually when you get whacked in the stomach area, you can uh, shake it off quickly, yeah. but uh, you don't usually break bones there, but when you get hit in your shoulder, that's a tough area. So everybody is down taking a knee here, and uh, we've, we've seen this one play out before the last yeah. time we were here. D.Y., he got hurt as well. It was, ended up being a little bit of a back injury. Uh, I saw him earlier in the game when he was putting on his pads, and he had that back brace. Uh, but hopefully it's maybe just the wind knocked out of him here. And he That's can what I was thinking. Get him up. He is That's, up. Yeah, there yeah. you go. He's a tough yeah. kid, I will say. He is a tough kid. As I noted in the D-wide game, we were, I saw him on the basketball court, and he is feisty and spunky. He'll get some time to rest here as the Whalers will face a punt as they go three and out as well. Justin Boyce back for the punt, and it'll be uh, two returners, number 14, Joey Berardi, and number 22, Quinn Mucha for Nosset. So both teams three and out. Both teams punt on their first situation. Let's see if Nantucket can pick up some field position with a punt from Justin. Good snap. Good kick. Wobbly knuckleballer. Handled fumbles and Nantucket jumps on it. Turnover. Nosset muffs the punt. First break goes to the Whalers. Yeah, he tried to catch it with his shoulder there. Not a good idea. Uh, it bounced away from the first Nantucket player. Then the Nosset player looked like he might slide in under, but the second Nantucket player came in and got on top of it. X1 field position, 9.27 to go here in the first period, but Nantucket's going to be... Uh, first and goal, or maybe first and 10 right at the 10. Let's see how they set up the stakes. It's hard to read the uh, lines over there. Looks uh, like right about the 10-yard line. We'll have to see if it's inside or outside of that 10-yard well, line. No, they do have it set up. So they can get a first down probably yeah. on about the 1. So let's call it the 11-yard line. And it is El Monte in at quarterback. We do not see. Oh, fumble. Boyce got it ripped out, and it looks like Nossick gets it right back. Almonte handed off to Blois, and someone got right in on the ball and ripped it out. And that will be a turnover right back. It's right now, in the early part of this game, Norset's showing me they are a tough team here. They, they made the mistake on the punt, but their uh, defensive guys are hitting uh, all downs. And even after the handoff there, I was watching the quarterback, the, the backup quarterback, Almonte. He got popped good. And... Yeah. Uh, Justin gets popped, so they're hitting, they're hitting people all over the field. So first and 10, the ball inside the Nosset 10-yard line at about the 8, and it'll be a QB keeper. He's weaving his way, falls ahead for, well, let's call it four yards, just outside the 10 to the 11-yard line. Bringing up second down and long, but a good safe play there, deep in your own territory. Bennett on the stop of the Willis. They Dylan White keeping it. They want to calm it down here. They don't want to turn it over yeah, right away again. Yeah. They'll take they'll take another three and out and punt it out of there if they have to. But they uh, they picked up two or three there. They may throw the ball here one once if it, they do. Yeah, we saw him warming up and he's got quite an arm from the left side. 
And uh, he is a junior, but he played all last year and some as a freshman as well, as Coach Strunk said. He uh, has a young team. Handoff up the middle and nothing doing there. That play was snuffed out by the D-line. A uh, slew of Whalers in on the tackle there, bringing up third and long, maybe lost a yard. Looks like third and seven. So third and seven, 8.05 to go here in the uh, first quarter. And uh, so we'll have to t try to get the ball down the field here. Look for yeah. a safe pass. They were doing a lot of slants in the warm-up. Let's yeah. see if they come back with a slant. Let's see if maybe J.J. Bennett or uh, Mr. Cass can get in there, maybe get their hands up and tip a ball here. Third and seven, shotgun formation, single setback. White back to pass, now rolling to his left. Got a little bit of room, now caught, and it will be a sack. What do we say, Jeremy Cass? You called it. in on the action. You called it, Jeremy, right there and brought it down. He is a sack machine. He had four in the first game against D.Y. And it'll be fourth and 10 from deep inside NASA territory. Look for the Whalers to get good field position coming out of this punt. Once again, Blois and Baden to receive for the Whalers. See if they can avoid a penalty here and uh, just take whatever they get on that return. The first punt was a low line drive that Baden took and ran it back well. Penalty brought oh, oh, There's a safety. That's gonna be a safety. Gotta go through, yeah. Okay. Bad snap. And two points goes to the Whalers right off the bat. They will now get a free kick and get the ball right back. Yeah, the kick will come from the 20. Norris will have the choice of uh, either kicking it from the tee or punting it. And Tucker will set up right in front of us here on the 40. So uh, they will get good field position. Uh, without any type of return, they, they should be operating from close to uh, midfield here. 6.53 to go. And how often do you say it's two to nothing? Two to nothing. In a football game. Not a football game, but baseball maybe. <laughs> the best one is, well, best is if Nossa does come back and kick a field goal. Right. You have three a nice to three to two. <laughs> three to two in the fourth inning. What's the only score you can't have in a football game? I'll test Ooh, your knowledge. Here. Zero, zero. No, you can have zero, yeah. zero. You were close. You didn't win it, though. One to nothing. One to nothing or ah, one to one. One to one. One there to one go. or one to nothing. That's the only score you can't have. There you go. And somebody said, well, you can't score 100 points. Yeah. The, uh, you technically the college, could, yeah. Uh, yeah. The highest scoring college game, Cumberland University down in Georgia, scored 222 points. I don't know who they were playing. Maybe their grandmothers. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, Grandma. Right. 222 to nothing. So uh, wow, not, much, uh, not much competition that day. So you can't score in the hundreds. And that's the kind of stuff we keep Dick Herman around for, baby. 220 to nothing, Cumberland College. Look it up. Now, now I'm scared to say that because people can look it up with Oh, yeah, seconds. Google, yeah. yeah. You can Google that immediately. They don't have to go to the library Monday morning. What's the library? Yeah. Place where they keep books. Oh, books, right, yeah, that, that old thing. All right, so they're going to put it on the tee here. And uh, yeah, Tuckett's uh, dropped back to about the 28. So they will, they will get decent field position out of this. And here we await the free kick after the safety. Two nothing, your Whalers are up. And it will be a short kick, keeping it away from those dangerous receivers. Wow. Cass um, gathers it in and uh, just dives ahead to about the 43 yard line of Nosset. As he, noted, he doesn't Whalers want to, he, he get doesn't good want, field position. He doesn't want to take any chances of fumbling it, so he said, uh, He's a wise up man. He's just fall on. Just, just bring it, bring it right down, and uh, good field position here. So they mark it at the 44, technically. First and ten for the Whalers, and once again Almonte in at quarterback. So Aguilar is out as of right now, only lasting one series for the Whalers. We'll, we'll try see to see what happens here. We'll again, Justin pick. Boyce fumbled on his first carry. Or last carry, I should say. And it is another handoff to Boyce, and he cuts it outside, has some room, 35-30. Not going to catch him. This is going to be a Warriors touchdown. 44 yards. I guess that makes up for a fumble. That makes up for the fumble in a big, big way. One play, and it's six points for the Whalers. They take advantage of that safety with the free kick. 
Boys cuts it outside, and you're not going to catch him when he gets in space. 44 yards to Pater. And as a coach, that's a good coaching tactic. Give it right back to him. He, he, caught, he made the fumble. Give it right back to him. He answers. 44-yard run. And he will try and put the Whalers up 9-0 here with the extra point, Mr. Do-It-All. Good snap, kick is up, and it is good. 9-0 your score here with 6.40 to play in the first quarter. Whalers getting two points on a safety and a 44-yard touchdown run by Justin Blois. Yeah, that was nice. There was, there was two guys out there. I thought they uh, might have the containment. He just sort of lowered his shoulder like he was going to come into the middle of the field, and that froze both of them. And once he saw that they were froze, then he just kept going to the outside. I think he was going to go to the outside anyways, yeah. but he, he deked them into thinking he might come back through the middle of the field. He set and it up nicely. They had no chance once he got to the outside. They, they, uh, they did not get I don't think they got within five yards of <laughs> no, them. There was no one close. I think the wide receiver with downfield blocking for the Whalers was the closest to catching him. But uh, that's the specialness that is Justin Boyce. And uh, Makai Bodden just as dangerous as well. But, uh, man, that's a great way to make up for a fumble, as you said. Give it right back. Feed him. Just keep feeding him. So if, if Nantucket's going to win this game, and it's, it's very early here, nicely 9 and nothing, they got to use the speed just like that to uh, score more points. Absolutely. At, because I think Nauset is tough enough, and we've seen it on defense already, where they've uh, taken out our quarterback, caused the fumble, yeah. made some hits. Get it, get it outside the outside the Boys, tackles, get right? The get it outside the tackles, and a nice crowd fu funneling in now. It was kind of like it was a Dodgers game, though. A little late getting here. A little late getting here. It's all that. Nice track. kickoff once again, and a fair catch. Unbelievable. At the ten yard line, a little surprising Un there. Unbelievable. I don't, I don't know sure why what... he did that. Robinson on I mean, he could have fallen forward for a couple yards at least. I'm but. not. I'm not sure he knew what he was doing that. Yeah. Because he, he seemed surprised when the uh, the official blew the whistle. Well, I didn't see. I didn't see the signal. I didn't yeah. see his hand go up. But uh, he's not arguing. So you, you usually do that when you have a lot of yeah, traffic Coach around. Yeah. out there uh, explaining to the uh, referees. Robinson not that it matters. He was. Waving, I think some of the up man or counting maybe the up man, and they deciphered that as a fair catch. I wonder if they can uh, do any recourse. The only rec <laughs> well, the only yeah, recourse can be a re-kick. Yeah. So I, that'll get the Nantucket coaches involved sure, if they sure. call for a re-kick. But other, well, first and ten for Nauset. They begin uh, again deep in their own territory at the nine-yard line. Now they're going to come over and talk to the coach. Here. He's he's trying to figure out what happened. I, I don't think he's going to win this argument. Yeah, I don't think they can force him to re-kick. But he'll at least get a minute or so to get the explanation. Here. We were we were talking about the weathermen get away with saying things, and the, the uh, official once the official makes a call, you, that should you know, be it. You're not going to unless they come up here and look at our new monitor here. And That's have a true. Little, they could a, have a little. Uh, Instant replay. We're not, we're not quite set up for instant replay yet. <laughs> we're getting there, though. We're getting there, though. Uh, I will say I am just jealous of weathermen because they can be wrong all day, <laughs> every day, and still have a job. So uh, no re-kick. No <laughs> re-kick. First and ten at the eight. NASA begins once again deep in its own territory, already down 9 nothing with 6.39 to go here in the first quarter. Two wide receivers to the far side of the field, closest to us. Once again, shotgun formation, and it'll be a handoff up the middle, and nothing doing once again. That is snuffed out. That will be a loss on the play, almost a safety. Well, it's at a point right now that Norsett has to move the ball here. If they have another three and out and got a punt from their own end zone. This could get uh, out of hand quickly. Real, could become real ugly quick. So Dylan White awaiting the signal from Coach Strunk. It was like a five-yard loss. So it was going to make make it yeah. second and maybe four yards, second or 14. 
And that's at about the three yard line, so they can't go any further back here. And it'll be another safety. This is when those defensive players oh, just queue up, baby. Just, they are ready to go here. <laughs> you just want to go forward. And... Shotgun formation. Fake handoff. Rolling to his right. Throwing. Wide open. And a nice gain out close to first down yardage. That was number 45, Duncan Lowry, the tight end. Wobbly pass, but effective as White was able to complete it from his own end zone. And that gives them some breathing room. It does pick up the first down. 22 went deep, and uh, that opened up underneath for him. 22 was open, too. But the That's a tough rollout for a left-hander, though. The quarterback is rolling up the opposite way. He would have had a hard time getting it to 22. He was wise, took the underneath guy, and picks up about 14 yards. Nothing near. So they needed that first down. A much-needed first down for Nossett, for sure. First and 10 at about the 18-yard line. Single setback motion, and they'll hand it off. No, nope, fake handoff. White keeps it. Short gain. Safe play, though. That White could be setting something up, though, with that fake motion. Yeah, he had the flow going uh, to his uh, right, and uh, he came back to his uh, left. And uh, they gave him a good game. He yes. picked up about six or seven. Six so or seven. Short four, long three. So second down and short. This could open up the playbook a little bit for Nossett as Dylan White has a solid arm. Wide receivers to the far side of the field, too. And he will hand it off. And once again, the defensive line of Nantucket is all over that one. Number 75, Sawyer Corby filling up the hole. And he had a couple of friends with him. Nobody blocking 75. I don't, I don't understand that. You can't let, it's different when a linebacker gets in there. But uh, he was right in the backfield. Loss of about one, so call it a full third and four now. Ball at the 24-yard line of Nossett. Whalers looking to hold here. They are up 9-0 with 3.52 and counting in our first quarter. Once again, our first quarter's coverage brought to you by Nantucket Bank. Nantucket Bank, a proud sponsor of Whaler football. And it's going to be a timeout by Nossett. Dylan White didn't like what he saw. So timeout with 3.41 to play. Once again, your Whalers up 9-0. And uh, cloud's kind of moving in a little bit, but uh, doesn't look like rain anywhere near us. I don't so. think we're going to get the rain uh, during the game, though. I think they're, they're going to get it in. And uh, what a week for September. You know, some of the days this week were, were warmer than the uh, July days. Yeah, totally. I mean, it was 75-ish today with the sunshine, so... Beautiful day for football, no doubt about it. To quickly recap the scoring, the Whalers got on the board with a Nosset uh, missed snap, went over the punter's head and uh, safety on the free kick. Whalers got the ball at the 44-yard line. One play later, Justin Blois took it to the house and then added the extra point as well, giving us a 9-0 score. And uh, this is, a, is about a key, a third down, as, as Nosset will have so far. They definitely would like to get on the scoreboard but even just to flip the field here and get the whalers on their own end uh, it has been all in nasa territory thus far yeah they got the one first down on the third down pass and they had a nice first down play but uh now they're back to a third and four did they throw it again i i think they almost have to they uh they're talking and, uh, to stopping their running game jeremy casp asking for some Support from the fans, and it is a blackout, as you saw. All the fans uh, wearing uh, Whaler Black tonight. Whaler Black. <laughs> and single setback to White's right side. Calling for motion once again. Faking the handoff. He's going to keep it. Going to have to hurry up, and nothing doing there. Two Whalers in on White the tackle. The yeah, Looked they... like Caden Shea was Whaler holding his back. position. And he had some help. They went back to the play that got him the uh, yardage on first down, but this time Nantucket's waiting, and they made a, might have picked up one. Fourth and uh, four. They, I don't know what they're thinking of. Looks if they, like they're if, going for it here. If they're going for it, then that means that they uh, have lost all faith in this long snapper. I would say not confident in the special teams or really the defense, because even if you 
can get the punt off. Needless to say, this is important. Fourth and four for Nossett. White with the handoff and it's gonna be close. Gonna be close. Let's see where they see where they spot it. He got about four. They're gonna give him the first down. Huge play for Nossett. Moves the chains. So a big gamble there, and Nossett gets the uh, first down, second in this drive. So uh, Coach Strunk looks like an expert now. <laughs> well, but I'm think I'm thinking uh, that 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 snap. On the on the punt was so bad that maybe uh, yeah. maybe that's a uh, an area that they need a lot of work on. And, yeah. uh, what about that college coach, a, a, a middle uh, middle of the country coach somewhere in Iowa or somewhere? Yeah. Uh, never punts. Oh, he just he, goes he, for he, it. Up. I, I mean, they do he, say the analytics are better if he, you just go for it. He says it saves a lot of time in practice. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <There you laughs> we go. don't have to practice punting. Shotgun formation, white back to pass this time, and you're facing a slew of Whaler pressures. Fumble! Ball is out! Looks like Nossett did get it back, but somebody put a hat right on the ball, and it popped, popped loose. It'll be a big loss and another sack for the Whalers. He was slow getting up. Yeah, that was right on his throwing arm, it looked like. I don't know if... I don't know. If, uh, he boss. might have made it. He might have made it back to the original line of scrimmage, but when he got popped, the ball flew backwards, as you say, six or seven yards there, and uh, setting up second and. If he could have, if he could have held on to it, it might only be second and nine rather than second and sixteen or seventeen. But that's what Nossett faces here, as the play is coming in. White hustling into the huddle now and. It will be second and 17, clock approaching one minute of play here left in the first quarter. Nine, nothing the score. Four wide outs, two on each side, single setback, and it'll be White looking for a hole, and he is gobbled up. Hesitated for a moment and just got eaten alive by yeah. two or three different whalers. Looking looking for a seam to slide through there, but there was nothing there. And uh, I was surprised on that call because he was slow getting up uh, from the last play when, when he fumbled. And uh, Why not they give gave it to someone else? They, yeah. gave, they gave it to him right again and uh, not much there at all. He, he's lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. So third and 17. This will probably be, well, I say probably, if they pass it, it will stop the clock, but if they run the ball or complete the pass, this will be the last play of the first quarter. A quarter dominated by Nantucket. It's been entirely in the Nosset end of the field. An inside counter run on third and 17, and that's just not gonna get it done, kids. Interesting play call. That will lose a couple, and they're gonna have to punt here. Bad snapper or not. We're gonna find out and that ends the first period. So we have played one period here at uh, Vito first quarter. Charlie, <laughs> Charlie, and, sorry Charlie. You. First quarter, first quarter. Uh, we have played one quarter here at Vito Capizo Stadium in the Nantucket Whalers are holding a commanding, I'm going to say commanding. You can say it. Not, it's nine or nothing, but they're, they're dominating this one. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a domination thus far. And uh, nine nothing, really not indicative of, of how dominating it's been. Uh, they will have to. Uh, <laughs> we have a special birthday celebration being sung here. I think I heard the name Star. I'm, I'm not sure ah, which yes. star it is. There you go. Happy birthday. So, getting those birthday wishes out of the way, we'll get back to, <laughs> we'll get back to football. some football. What the ball? We're here, right? The second quarter of play is presented by Eight Arms Chef Services, providing Whalers fans with full-service catering, prepared meal drop-offs, and private chef services. Well, pretty much a domination in the first quarter. Uh, you know, obviously you capped off with the, the long run by Justin Blois, a safety, and uh, in the trenches, it has been all Nantucket. Yeah, the O-line and D-line have dominated. The first series, or maybe 
part of the second series, the Norset uh, defensive line looked pretty strong and tough, but uh, Nantucket has certainly taken it over from that yeah. point there and put the points on the board. So, Lois and Bodden back to receive about the 40 yard line, another iffy snap, and this should be returnable. Oh, it goes over his head, but Blois will recover. Let's see what he can do. Cuts it back, tries to get the edge to the 40, 45, 50 and wrangled down by his ankles inside the Nosset side of the field at the 42 yard line. Otherwise, he could have been gone again. I'm gonna go back to my original pin, pinball action. That's right, flag down way back at the line of scrimmage that from could the be, punt. That could be, to see what this is. That could be uh, holding. Oh. It is holding, so that'll, uh, I don't know if that's an oh, automatic oh, first oh. down or not. We'll have to see what happens here. They'll kick it again if it's only f if it's 15 because it won't be enough for first down. But I'm, I don't know if it's an automatic. Uh, depending on where it'll, it's going to be a first down. They're marking it not from where the flag hit fell down. Oh wait a minute, they're they marking. I don't know where they're marking it from. They're taking it way back. What's going on here? They're almost taking it back to the first quarter. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the second quarter. You wow. can't bring it back to the first quarter. They brought the ball back all the way to the 28-yard line of Nantucket. They added. That's got to be a personal foul of some sort, but I'm not sure they, I, what foul could possibly be. It's like they added the 15 yards on from where he caught it. Yeah. Not from where he ended well, up running. Well, good sign here. Sorry to interrupt. Aguilar back at quarterback. He will keep it himself, cuts inside. Oh no, hands it off inside. To Caden Shea, who gobbles up some yardage across the 40 to the 43 yard line. Nice run by Caden Shea. We, we need to get uh, Caden Shea's dad on to spend the period with us. John, he is always John, invited in the booth. John, if you're out there and you want to come by sometime, come by and say hi to us. Well, he is actually hosting uh, the uh, Shark Tank tonight. Oh, maybe the, uh, the pitch, Nantucket pitch. Maybe he's uh, watching on TV. Perhaps, perhaps. Otherwise, he can watch us on yeah. Sunday. The rebroadcast of the game right here will be on NCTV at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock, John, if you're busy tonight. Aguilar gets the snap, quick pass, and it is Bodden hauling it in for a short gain. Maybe they'll they're call it incomplete. To say, they're trying to say incomplete. At least Noss it is, but the official is, isn't but buying it. But he was down. The official isn't buying it. They're going to call it a complete pass. Quick slant for about four yards on first down. It'll be second and six. Oh, they now retract that and call it incomplete. Incomplete. Second and ten. Looked like he had made a football move, but... Apparently, they went to the replay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Nosset kids, and you never can go with the uh, defense is saying, but they, they were saying it incomplete right off the bat. Yeah. So one of the officials did see it that way. So the quick slant goes incomplete, second and 10 for the Whalers. Once again, Aguilar back into the game. He's got Blois in the backfield with him. Looked like false start. That cast took a little lean ahead before the snap. So with 10.41 to play, there will be a penalty that will knock the Whalers back five yards. Second and 15 coming up here. And what Nosset needs is a stop here. Yeah. They're gonna keep themselves in this game. Ball start against the Whalers. Yeah, Tucker does not want to get into the penalty mode oh because my. that's, uh, that hurt them. Uh, in the DY game, it hurt DY more. Hurt both teams, really, yeah. That was DY was uh, a total of about 20 penalties doing, between the two teams. Doing a lot of uh, <clears throat> craziness, too. So Baden split to the short side of the field. J.J. Bennett, and it'll be a handoff. Oh, no, a fake handoff, and he should have handed it off as uh, Aguilar is gobbled up and hobbling a little bit on that ankle. It looks like he wanted to handle it off, but it looked like it didn't come about. So yeah. I don't know what uh, what happened on that. <laughs> but uh, again, lucky to hold on to it. Big loss, bringing Huge up loss. third and long. 
You don't have too many plays in your playbook here. <laughs> Third and about 20, we'll call it 19. But you do something sure, yeah. and you hope that the guy can uh, make somebody miss. Got to do something safe here, and uh, hope maybe somebody can break a tackle and uh, pick up that first down. It'll be a full shotgun, nobody in the backfield. It'll be Blois kind of in that wildcat formation. And he will get the handoff and met immediately in the backfield. A missed assignment there and uh, a loss on the play. And Nasa does what they needed to do, get the ball back. Not a very good se no. uh, series for your will. It's 9.30 to go. They're going to have to punt it here. And uh, again, Nasa has shown a lot of weakness on special teams here. So again, they're going to have to catch this ball. The only one they caught was the fair catch. The fair catch, which shouldn't, have been, which shouldn't have been a fair catch. <laughs> They've had a, a, a snap go over the punter's head, a fumble on a punt, and a fair catch on a kickoff. Blois receives and gets a line drive end over end, bounces at the 50, and should take a Whalers bounce and fall dead at about the 43 yard line of Nosset. So good field position for the Warriors. We'll see if they can uh, take advantage and dip into this Whalers 9-0 lead, 9.01 to play in the first half. Once again, our second quarter of play is sponsored by Eight Arms Chef Services, providing full service catering, prepared meal drop-offs, and private chef services to all Whalers fans. It's probably the best field position they've, they've had today. So. It is indeed their best field position. We'll have to see if Dylan White and the offense can take advantage. Once again, single setback in that shotgun formation. Two wide receivers to the long, far side of the field closest to us. White gets the snap and rolls, and he will keep it. Breaks a tackle and reaches for the first down. Nice little run inside Whalers territory. They mark him out just short of the first down. It'll be second and yeah, call it one. Is is that the first time he's rolled right? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, they've been rolling him left all day. He looked much more comfortable going to the right that time. Which makes sense as the left-hander. So second and one for Nosset. This opens up the playbook for sure. Could see maybe a little play action here and uh, look for something down the field. Yeah, they may gamble here. Tight end in the shotgun formation. Nope, it is a handoff right up the middle. It will be a first down run. Inside the 45 to the 44, still on his feet. So the well into will of territory now, setting up first down at about the four, and they're gonna call it right at the 45. Just the third first down for Nosset. First and 10 from the Whalers, 45. Breaking the huddle quickly. And coming with another power formation. Halfback and a setback. Handoff goes inside. That's Logan Julian. He uh, sophomore he was, running back. He was being tackled right at the line of scrimmage, but uh, he sort of fell forward and an Antucket defense helped him by pushing him forward. Yeah. But he's not getting up very quickly. Looked like someone fell on one of the linemen's ankles. He's pointing to his uh, foot. But Once again, 9-0 our score here. 7.55 to play in the first half. First quarter dominated by the Whalers. They got two points on a safety as the snap went over the punter's head deep in Nossett's end. The ensuing free kick. Got the Whalers good field position at the 44 yard line. Justin Blois taking it into the end zone one play later. And also adding the extra point to make our score nine to nothing. And now the players will be uh, going to the sideline. So this. The official, will be I think, a, called an official thing. timeout here. Call the timeout. The, the kid is getting is. up on his own. I, I thought when the players left the field that the uh, the ambulance might be going out to get him, Number but he's 54, up okay. Alex Lighton. 
I was thinking, I thought it was the running back, but no, it was the uh, one of the blockers yeah, leading the way. Like, it looked like one of the Whaler players kind of fell into him on the back side of his ankle, which is always kind of dangerous. Uh, he is limping off in his own strength, so that's a good sign. Uh, junior Alex Lighton <clears throat> slightly injured on the play, looked like an ankle. So it'll be second down at about seven as we get back to action here. Ball at the 42-yard line of Nantucket. Again, best field position for Nauset thus far as they look to dip into the 9-0 lead here. Let's see if the Whalers uh, take note of the new lineman in there, yeah. replacing him. That's the place you uh, want to send your uh, blitzer this time. Get the new guy involved. Go right through him. And a good crowd now all around the entire uh, Whalers end of the field. And of course, the student section strong as always. It'd, it'd be a bigger crowd here if they could be cooking up those uh, sausages <laughs> over there. We're still waiting for permission there from the town to light the grill. There you go. Right back to pass, facing some pressure. Eludes, and he will try and jump forward for the first down. Caden Shea with a big hit. And White is down on the ground now. That was close. That was close to being out of bounds, but he, he was trying to stretch for the extra yard or two. So Kanan uh, made him pay for it. So let's see who they will have to go to a backup quarterback. That could be Kyrian Hanville, number seven. That is who is getting some snaps here. Sophomore, play some wide receiver and defense as well, but it'll be Kieran Hanville, number seven, right in front of us here, getting some snaps for at least one play. We'll have to hope that uh, Dylan White is okay. Now they with got seven twenty to go. Now they got number two up. I don't know what Trainer, their trainer, well, our trainer comes over to join in, Matt, see if he yep. can help. Their trainer is sort of working his uh, knee, twisting it back and oh, forth. Yeah. If she was doing that to my knee, I'd be sore. So. Yep, yep. <laughs> Let's hope it's not serious. He is sitting up, so that's yeah. a good sign. Well, I'm, uh, what, I'm, what I meant by that was his, his knee must be okay if, yeah. they, if they're twisting if they're it that able way. able to work it. Yeah, he's up, so that's good. But he he'll take up. one play off, and let's see if uh, the coach went over and told number two something, but we saw number seven in the pregame yep. warming up. So let's see if two is going to take this. No, two is staying on the sidelines. He's got to sit out for at least one play, and it will be Hanville getting the play calling duties. Tough situation for the backup. Yeah. Third and two. They're going to go for it here anyways on That's fourth true. down. They're not going to. They're not going to punt it from here. Definitely four down territory. So the coach, coach is uh, telling them to uh, run a safe play. I think it'll be a handoff to one of the big backs and see if he can bowl ahead for the two yards. The only back back there with them is twelve. Logan Julian in the backfield with Hanville. Let's see if he can handle the snap here first. Gets it and does hand off. First down run and a little bit more down to about the 31 yard line of Nantucket. It'll be first and 10 as Julian gets the carry. We'll have to see if White enters the game here. He's got his helmet back on, but he is hobbled for sure. And here we go. That's Coach, a tough kid. Coach wants him back. That's a tough kid. Backup quarterback did his job, handled the snap. Got the first down. Handed it off, and a nice run by uh, 45. Julian. Yeah, he did, he did a good job. He found the hole, and uh, I thought he might break it there for a second through the safety. So wide outs to the far side and the short side of the field. White hands it off again to Julian, and he is met, but uh, falls forward for about four yards. Nice gain on first down. Clock continues to run now under 6.30 to play here in the first half. I think the Whalers content with that clock running. Yeah, White didn't do much after that handoff, so uh, 
That's going to limit their play call. Once yeah, the Whalers see that he hands off and just limps around back there by himself, they're, they're playing with only 10 guys now. Yeah, you got to think Coach Ouellette's going to notice that on the defensive uh, end of things and uh, bundle it up in the middle. Because two of the best plays of the game is, has been rolling to the right. Yeah. But he got hurt on the second one. So Second at about seven inside the 30 of about the 24. And he is definitely hobbling again, rolling to his left. Completes the pass. Met, met by two Whalers. Good tackle by Blois. And number 13, Sean Murphy out on the edge. I just don't understand <laughs> rolling against the grain. Uh, I think some of these coaches watch too much Sunday football. Those guys it, doing it on Sunday are, are, are a little more are, agile. Are, are the few in the, in the country that can do it on yeah. a regular basis. But third and kids. one coming up here, well, third and two, you know it's four down territory. No one in the backfield, but it is a handoff to Julian, and he breaks it free. First down and more. Yeah, he's finding some success all of a sudden. This time he goes back over the right tackle. Last time he made it over the left tackle, so he's finding a little bit of a seam there. And uh, First and 10, Nossett on the move. By far their best offensive drive. Well, if you're going to make it a ball game, you got to score in this drive. 4.50 to go. Clock is running. I'm, I'm sure they have three timeouts left. Uh, they did use one, so they have two timeouts left for Nossett, but uh, ball on the 15-yard line of Nantucket. Nossett in business. Let's see if Julian gets another carry here. He does. And snuffed out this time by the Whalers. They were ready for that one. He might have picked up a yard or two, but not much more than that. Second down, and they call it no gain on the play. This game, the line of scrimmage. Again, ball at the 16 yard line, but for sure four down territory for Nossett as they went for it in their own territory. <laughs> so yeah. they're definitely going for it now. So now they need to their way back into the game. The Nantucket defense can key, not so much on the quarterback because uh, he's limited. He's limited. Now we have a and timeout. Timeout, Nossett. That'll be their second timeout. Timeout, Nossett. 3.59 to play in the first half. Again, Dylan White noticeably hobbling on that leg. But he is sticking it out thus far. Game is moving a little bit quicker than uh, last home game we did. Yeah, well, we didn't have 20 penalties in the first <laughs> half, so there's <laughs> that. Uh, I don't know, I may make it home for first pitch tonight. You may, you may make it home big, for first big, pitch. Big series tonight, Red Sox and Yankees going head to head. A big sports weekend, Ryder Cup going on as well. And I uh, got to mention that uh, some great golfers out at Maya Comet and Sankety, the uh, mid-amateur nationals. So the winner goes to the US Open and the Masters. So pretty cool stuff happening for the first time ever on uh, Nantucket golf courses, uh, and it's free to go see it, but uh, parking always an issue out at uh, Sankety and Mike. Sankety, yeah, uh, Sankety, they tell me to park on Grinnell Street, and they'll... But very cool stuff, and I know they are still looking for some volunteers, so if you got some free time and want to go watch some great golf, uh, get a hold yeah. of Nate Roberts. Okay, second and 10 for Nossett. White hands it off once again to Julian. He's caught in the backfield. Yeah. That will be another loss on the play. You don't take, you don't take a timeout and come back with that play. Not a great call. Not a great call <laughs> there by the uh, coaching staff. To call, use a timeout and then come back with the play that Nantucket is sitting on. Third and about 12 now. Once again, four down territory for Nossett, but uh, this now makes it a, a two play drive. You got to. Stop him on two plays and you get the ball back. 327 to play and counting. And once again, White noticeably hobbling into the huddle. Yeah, he, uh, Nossett has to uh, think in terms of getting at least six or seven on this play. Yeah, get, get halfway home and then you got a, a, a reasonable shot at getting the first down on fourth down. In the shotgun and a penalty flag. Got to be 12 men on the field perhaps much time maybe delay of game that's on the coaching staff that is on the coaching staff 
And now when you, third. Have, when, you, when you have your quarterback standing in the middle of the field looking at you, then he goes back in the huddle, and the flag comes out, that's on, that's on you. Well, it looks like the same play they're going to call. So <laughs> third and 17 now as they get right up to the line. Now six and or seven more. And the clock start. Back to pass. Looking down the field, now trying to run, and he is definitely hobbling, but he's going to try and get to the sideline. Makes the corner, and a nice run by Dylan White on one and a half legs. Boy, tough kid, I'll tell you what. He is Boy. hobbling around, but able to get the edge and get about nine, eight yards. Yeah, if they didn't have that penalty there, that penalty looms very big now, but at least it gives him a, a chance. Yeah. Fourth and about eight or nine wow, for a without, first without, down. Without that penalty, it'd be fourth and three. <clears throat> well, they got to do the same thing. Down. They got to do the same For thing. Nothing. He does look a lot better rolling out to the right. Yeah. He starts rolling out to the right this time. Ian Tucker's going to come up, and he may pop somebody behind them. Two wide receivers to the far side of the field. Julian in the backfield. White back to pass. Looking deep over the middle. It's going to be intercepted at the end goal line and bringing it out. Whalers to the 25-30, 35-40. Cutting back, and still on his feet, and he could go all the way. Garner Ray for Whalers touchdown. There are flags on the field, however. Two flags. Ray, what a great run there, wow. but it's all going to come back. What a play. Let's hope it's not all for naught. Let's see. I hope this isn't a late hit down here. It was thrown right where the quarterback was tackled. And they are signaling for it to come back. Well, one of them has to be blocking in the back, at least one. It's, it's, uh, it's possible that both referees saw the same hit. Yeah, that's So that even though there are two flags, it, it could be the same wow. play, but it's coming back. An exciting play, a duck of a throw, and Garner Ray gobbled it up, and he was off to the races. Did he catch that in the end zone? It was just about the goal line. Yeah, yeah maybe one yard in. Usually, usually you catch him in the end zone, you put your knee down. Put your but, knee down, but, but uh, uh, what an exciting run back. When you, uh, when you don't catch him very often, you want to run. That's true. That's <laughs> I can true. put my knee down anytime, coach. I'm going to run. Maybe they should get him on the offensive side of things. He weaved his way right through, broke a couple of tackles. Senior defensive back. Ghana had his uh, moment of glory there. It's all for naught, but it's really got a lot of people excited, including you. You almost fell out of the booth there. I course. did almost I, fall I, out I had the to booth. grab you by your pin booth there to pull you back in. All right, so looks like they're putting it on about the 10 yard line, 8 yard line, somewhere in that vicinity. First yeah, and 10 for the Whalers. First and 10 for the Whalers. They do get the interception, the turnover, so it keeps them out of the end zone. 2.25 to play here in the first half. 9-0, Whalers with the advantage. Well, the Whalers and kept uh, Nosset out of the uh, end zone. They don't want to make a mistake here, though, and give Nosset another chance. You want to hang on to this ball. One first down should uh, bring you to halftime with your, your shuttle intact. And it'll be Aguilar keeping it himself, trying to get the edge. He does not get there. And fortunate to just get out of the end zone. A loss on the play of about two yards. So that'll bring up a second, I think they're gonna call it more than two. Second and about 13 or 14. They're gonna say it about maybe even a five yard loss. Wow. So pushing them back there. Now, uh, Ross gets another stop like that. They might use it their time out to get the ball time back. Just to, just to make them punt anyways, but uh, 145 and counting in the first half. Second and long at the two yard line. Wow. So dangerous area of the field for Nantucket. Can't afford another loss here. Still in the shotgun formation. Blois to Aguilar's right. Rolling out. Tip pass and caught by Casp off the tip. Wow, Real very deep. aware play by the tight end. Real dangerous Jeremy there. Cass. That could have went to anybody and it goes to Cass. Not enough for the first down. Basically, it's only about a five or six yard pass. 
Bringing up third and long, but lucky there to even keep the ball. Yeah, Nossett, uh, Nossett uh, didn't get any luck on that because uh, an incomplete pass at least stops the clock. Could <laughs> have at least stopped it, yeah. So clock now under a minute to play, and in Nantucket in no hurry, really, to... I don't think Nantucket wants to call do that anything. play, yeah, call they're that just play gonna... again. They should run it and uh, kick it. Blois now split to the left of Aguilar. And it is Aguilar rolling, setting up. Another deep pass into triple coverage, but Bennett hauls it down at the 40. He wrestled three Nauset players and held on to it for a Whalers first down all the way out to the 41 yard line. Well, it looks good. It looks good in the stat sheet. Two for two in his last two passes. <laughs> and Joe Perry calls time out here. Maybe he thinks he can get a little something out of this. Oh yeah, one more, one more big uh, pass play, and you could be uh, setting Justin up for a, uh, a hat trick there. Getting Who knows? A, yeah. Getting a, I mean, getting he's got the leg ball. to kick at 50, I think. Yeah. And it'd be the perfect situation, perfect time to try it. So yeah. if you do need it down the road, you, you know you got it in there. And technically, it looks like the wind is going with the Whalers, whatever wind there is, not a lot of it, but uh, it does look like it is helping. And uh, wow, what a play by J.J. Bennett. Again, he is taller than any other player on the field, coming in at 6'7". Can't wait to see him on the basketball yes. court as well. And he went up and, and stole that ball away. There was two defenders hanging on him there. It looked like they were going to have a chance to pull it in, but he said, no way, Junior. One of the co-captains. And he did not play last year. He was one of those uh, kids that, uh, you know, for whatever reason, didn't, didn't go out for football. So happy to have him on the football field for sure. Aguilar back. Blois motion in the backfield. He will roll out once again. Looking, looking. And now fumbles it out of bounds. Another hard tackle. But clock does stop with the ball out of bounds. Aguilar didn't know if he was going to run it, throw it, and ended up fumbling it, losing it a few yards. Well, again, lucky, luckily they uh, got the ball Five seconds to, to go. That should have been a clock stoppage. They're going to have to stop it now. That clock just kept running. Yeah. Uh, what are they? Or, I don't know why it was running. I did see one of the officials point to the ground. So huh. the, the back official was saying, he was down. down. Down before the so fumble that's, then. So uh, the officials know they got to catch a boat. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they were going to get rid of that 14 seconds if nobody was looking. Finally, Nantucket figured out that uh, they want to run their last play. They got to call the timeout. So they did. They have one last play. Now they won't punt. They won't have to punt. They got one play left in them. A little too far for field goal, but yeah. uh, not for a Hail Mary. That's true. And again, you never know. A pass interference and you get another play and it's worth throwing it up there. You got a guy like JJ Bennett, six foot seven. He can get his hands above everybody. My wife and daughter, who is uh, 16 months, came over here, but uh, all that excitement scares the little baby. So <laughs> they're going to go watch the second half at home. And we're glad she's that you saying, are watching us saying, here at NCTV 18. She's saying to Mommy, is that Daddy up there yelling his head off? Did I, what did I do wrong, Mommy? She's used to me yelling at the TV, that's for sure. I'm a Cleveland Browns fan, so I gotta, I'm yelling at the TV a lot. 9 nothing, our score. They put 11 seconds on the game clock, and it will start when the play commences. Aguilar dropping back to pass. Setting up a screen play. Oh, dangerous throw. Caught by Blois, though. Let's see what he can do here. Breaks through a few, and he is off to the races. 45-50, 45-40. Pinball, pinball. Cuts all the way back across the field. Pinball time. Flag is down. Blois. Oh, there's another penalty. Oh, trips over his own feet and another flag is down. Yeah, there's a clip right there. What an incredible oh, effort oh. by Justin Blois. But there's a flag all the way back at the 45-yard line. Well, this is a clip here. And another flag. So the half, the half is over. 
the officials should just say, go to your benches, guys. Yeah. And uh, we, won't, we won't even try to figure out this. Just go to your benches. Yeah, he's sending them to the benches. Pretty Half incredible goal. end to the first half, I must say. Between Garner Ray's return for a touchdown <laughs> nullified. Well, earlier in the game, we had Justin's. But uh, the saying is you, you can't end the half on a penalty, but I think there were two penalties. I think maybe, there were so many three. penalties, they may just they, end the they're half. They're going to end the half. They're not even going to sort them out. Right now, the officials are just trying to find out what flag they own to. So we have reached halftime here at Vito Capizzo Stadium. The score, the Nantucket Whalers, nine. The Nauset Warriors, nothing. They are still discussing things here, so we're not going to go to our halftime segment quite yet. We do have a special show, a special highlight to our halftime segment, so uh, we'll, we'll wait upon official. I don't know. I, I can't believe what they're talking about anything. They should just say the half's over. Yeah, I think this unless is all it's, for unless it's, here. Yeah. Halftime. Yeah. All right, halftime. <clears throat> All right, we have reached halftime here at Vito Capizzo Stadium. The score, nine nothing, good guys. Uh, up and down, a lot of exciting plays that were nullified, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, the Whalers got the scoring going with a, a safety off of a, a miscue on special teams by Nossett. Uh, the punt uh, team uh, had the snap go over their head. That got two points. Then the Whalers got the ball back, and Justin Boyce, Mr. Special, went to town. There's been so many runs. Justin had a couple. Uh, Bourne, I think, had one. Ray had one. I wish we had yards before penalties. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that should be a stat. Who we, takes care we, of that we, one? We have about 300 at least, I would think. I know, yeah, they, a lot of running, that's for run. sure. The, uh, the, I'm going to call them pinball runs because they're in and out, bouncing, going here, going there, and uh, it's unbelievable. We're going to let you coin that one. That's official. <laughs> We're going to coin that one, the pinball runs. Nonetheless, the score, 9 nothing here at halftime. And uh, in this evening's NCTV 18 halftime show, we're highlighting a young filmmaker and uh, Nantucketer, Grace Bartlett. She began her interest in film right here at Nantucket High School where she participated in the Nantucket Film Festival's Teen View program, a collaboration with NCTV 18. And Grace, a recent graduate of Yale, is a longtime videographer and editor at NCTV and is currently editing her first feature-length documentary, Bartlett's Ocean View Farm. It sheds some light on her family's 178 year old farm and their struggles to ensure there's something to pass down to the next generation of Bartlett. The short version of this film, since 1843, won Best Student Short at the New Haven Documentary Festival in 2019. And tonight, we have the privilege of sharing with you the trailer to the yet to be released documentary, Bartlett's Ocean View Farm. Enjoy. What would you say if I came to you and Asked you to take it over. I question your sanity. Whoo, history. How far back do you want me do you want me to go? By sixth generation, you are seventh generation. Your dad always says, you know, our main objective is we're trying to pass it to the next generation. And so everything that we do every single day is just trying to get it to you guys. This is really good. When I was really little, I thought it was all candy and roses. I thought everything was hunky-dory and we were making a billion dollars every day. Things are so different now than they were you know, 50 years ago. People don't buy you know, vegetables in quantities like they used to. No one's buying a 50 pound bag of potatoes. We're always still kind of one bad season. We don't have a lot of reserves. We don't really have a rainy day fund. From the newsroom, the first case of coronavirus has been confirmed on Nantucket, causing an order for residents to stay at home. We still 100% can cook. 
we could go bankrupt. And we'd like to welcome you back to Vito Capizzo Stadium. I am Chris Morris with the legend Dick Herman. And uh, it is 9 nothing here at halftime. Uh, pretty much a domination from Nantucket. Nosset only really had that one drive in the second quarter that was uh, potentially going to score. Snuffed out uh, by the interception by Garner Ray, who had an incredible run. Unfortunately, a penalty uh, brought it all back. But uh, Nosset has uh, pretty much lost in the trenches. And uh, I know that was something that Coach Perry was, was really uh, keying on in practice. Uh, and Coach Strunk was worried about because he has young kids, one of which even got hurt. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out in the second half, but I got to think that Nantucket's going to just keep pounding it and try and get those exciting Boyce and Bodden twosome on the outside. It's, it's tough to overcome those two guys and, and, and throw Ray in there too, but yeah. Nossett, as you say, is a young team. Yeah. And it's showing, and uh, they're physical, but Nantucket's all physical, and so it's good. Yeah, and uh, as, you, as you said, just two seniors on the Nosset squad compared to 15 for Nantucket. So kind of a rarity that Nantucket actually has a little more experience overall and uh, able to uh, exploit that with uh, just smarter play. You know, the punt, you gotta, gotta get the guy to snap. You know, even if you have a bad punt, you gotta get the guy to snap. So that immediately gave them two points. And then, uh, you know, an interception on fourth down you know, that, that really shouldn't happen. Um, but, uh, you know, overall, I think you nailed it with uh, Nantucket just being more physical, and that leads to all those other things. So if you're the Nosset coach, you get your kids down in the end zone now, you're, you're talking them up naturally, you're down yeah. two scores, what are you going to tell them? What do, you, what do you tell them to try to get them back, their heads back in the game so they can do something in the second half? Well, first they got to hope that Dylan White is healthy. Their quarterback is hobbled, uh, and uh, if he can go, uh, and if he can go even 80%, you've got to think you're going to throw him in there. It starts at the offensive and defensive line. You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one battles and uh, get the holes and or the wide receivers a chance to run their routes and, and get open so White can hit them with a pass. Uh, and on the other side of it, you've got to contain Nantucket's speed because they are definitely quicker. Well, the one drive you talked about that Nosset had, they did open up the holes. Yeah. And they were, uh, were getting some blocks on. And... Uh, that didn't happen on the last two drives. No. White, he's, he's playing at 75%. Uh, I yeah. don't know how long you can keep going with that and, uh, and hope that something happens. On the Nantucket side of things, again, you got to get it to your speedsters. They were able to get the ball to J.J. Uh, Bennett on a long pass on third down right at the end of the half to basically put a, a capper on the half. And uh, Blois and uh, Baden are just, anytime they touch the ball, you just never know. And uh, Garner Ray got in the action with his uh, return of an interception as well. He went, he ran about 175 yards, unfortunately for not the uh, penalties ending the half with the nine nothing score uh, for the Whalers. And uh, we will be back here next Saturday. We got Wes Bridgewater coming into town. Another tough opponent. Another tough opponent. I actually went over uh, last year and saw Wes Bridgewater and uh, they actually beat the Whalers. Uh, Coach Kogler's got a good squad, and again, they play bigger teams, and uh, another stiff challenge for the Whalers, but that'll be next Saturday. We'll kick it off at uh, 2.30. West Bridgewater always gets up for Nantucket. Yeah. For some reason, Nantucket takes them lightly, and West Bridgewater loves to beat Nantucket, <laughs> and it's gonna be a tough game. They actually played on Thursday night uh, and won 49 to nothing, so they've got a good squad. Wow. Who'd, yeah. who, who'd they beat? I, I can't pull that off the top oh, of my head, but they, nine, they throttled somebody. And they have a lot of returning players from last year as well. I, I, I recognized a few of the names. They're always small in Quick. players uh, dressed. Yeah. Sometimes they only have like 20 kids dressed. Oh, no kidding. All 18 and 19 of them are playing the whole game, you know, but in and out, in and out. He, he uses every kid he has. Nice. Well, we are approaching the second half of play here. Your Whalers are up nine to nothing. Uh, they have looked much better on both sides of the ball compared to what they did against Mashby. Obviously losing 28 to six, uh, but uh, consistency is what we're looking for here now. Let's see if we can 
do it another 24 minutes. Yeah, Nantucket, Nantucket you know, talked about what the Nantucket coach is saying, and the Nantucket coaching staff is saying, we're going to build on this. We don't, yeah. we don't want to sit on this. <clears throat> Let's, yeah, we want to get our shut up, but we want to score another couple of touchdowns. Let's beat them 20 to nothing, you know. So they're thinking along those lines. No mistakes, and then you hope for no injuries. Always got to keep the foot on the gas pedal. Always yeah. got to keep the foot on the gas pedal, because you never know. I mean, one silly little play, a fumble or something, and Nossett's right back in the game. Right. So uh, you got to keep the foot on the gas pedal offensively and defensively. Again, win those one-on-one -on -one battles. That's just across the board. Uh, but Coach Perry is preaching that in practice, winning those one-on-one -on -one battles. So let's see if they can uh, do it on the field. Stay away from the penalties. Stay away from the uh, miscues. That's, uh, that's important. And uh, you want to build on that. We're talking about next week. You want to get ready for next week by having a good second half in this game. Absolutely. And then still a couple of tough, tough games uh, for the remainder of the schedule. Uh, Sandwich, Off Island, and then, of course, the Island Cup here uh, against Martha's Vineyard. The Monomoy game, we talked about that earlier in the game, in the uh, pregame. Uh, don't know what's going to happen there. They didn't dress a varsity squad, so we'll have to see if that game actually counts or doesn't count because to make the playoffs, Dick, you had it explained pretty well. You got, yeah, you got to play seven games. Monomoy is the seventh game, yeah. so right now they have a six-game schedule. There's some talk about filling it, but once the season gets started, it's hard to fill a game, you know. Football is, is not like other sports, basketball, or hockey, where you can, you know, pick up an opponent or yeah. change, change a game. You play one game a week, and everyone else has got a game that week. Right. You were supposed to play Monomoy. If they're not going to play you because they have a JV team, you know, you're sort of out of luck. I think the state will have to say that's a forfeit. Yeah. Monomoy isn't going to care. It's going to help Nantucket, plus it's going to help Sandwich and I think Vineyard, who Monomoy often not. It's not just Nantucket. Yeah, they, yeah. They drop Anybody three else on their schedule. And I know uh, uh, these guys will play. Uh, they have Monomoy on their schedule as well. Uh, but doubtful if they're going to make the playoffs. But um, it's uh, very interesting that the politics of that or the, the logistics of of getting enough games, you would think that that wouldn't be an issue. But again, we've talked to Travis about it and. Uh, and he, he just says there's no one to fill it, you know. So hopefully they'll just count it for a win. <laughs> we'll take the win and get, get into some playoff action. Too bad you couldn't play back-to-back, -back, you know. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> Nasa comes in, stays overnight. Right, we'll play, yeah, just stay play 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 again tomorrow. 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 Play again tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> uh, speaking of future football, we also want to let you know that the rebroadcast of this game will be happening Sunday morning. So you can wake up with your coffee with Chris and Dick, 9 a.m. It will be the rebroadcast of this game. And uh, what a way to start your Sunday football day, right? If you're right? watching me at 9 o'clock, you better have your coffee strong. <laughs> Very strong. <laughs> and, and take the glasses off. Just listen to us. <laughs> uh, so that'll be fun. And, of course, you can always catch it on the YouTube channel. That's the NCTV18's YouTube channel. And uh, you can uh, watch that at your leisure. Anytime, just cue it up, and uh, we are getting ready for some football here once again for the second half of action. Your Whalers are up nine to nothing over the Nosset Warriors. Players making their way back to the sideline, and uh, we will be bringing you third quarter of action very shortly. Here, third quarter of action. We'll be coming up here in just a couple of minutes, but uh, thus far, uh, you know, as dominating as Nantucket has looked, it really is is basically it's a two score, but you know, one touchdown can get Nasset no, right yeah. back into it. One mistake, one mistake, yeah. Nasset gets a touchdown, then you have a ball game. I thought they had a drive going there that, that uh, yeah. vaulted at the end. That would have really made it tight, but uh, Nantucket held off. Their defense, as you say, is a. Uh, clogging up the middle there. The quarterback getting injured, that's really hurting yeah. Nossett right now. You don't know how long he can go. You just don't yeah. know. Or he, one hit away, you know. He, he, wants to, he wants to keep going, but uh, he's not at 100%. That's hurting. Yeah, got to salute the effort. I mean, he is a, a tough kid, and it was, it's I, a I, knee, too. I can see him coming up the sidelines right yeah. now, and he's, he's limping on the sidelines. So it's not like uh, something that's it's Definitely hobbled, field. and... Uh, We'll have to see if he can go. Hopefully he can for, for his sake and for Nossett's sake. Uh, but uh, we will see. Nantucket will get the ball as they deferred and kicked off in the first half. 
And the lights are officially on here, Dick. So we it have is. Friday night under it the lights is. here is. for the second half of play. It is Friday night lights. and uh, Very exciting and just love the look of the field under the lights. I'm going to predict. Okay, what do you got? Big prediction. Yep. Nossett is not going to kick deep. They're going to try an, on, <laughs> an onside kick. Oh, there you go. No, that's not a far, far, not far-fetched at all. I mean, it certainly they makes don't sense. Want, they don't want Justin to get his hands on the ball. <laughs> yeah, either way, there's Aubon, no way they're so no they, way they're kicking it deep. Uh, it, it's interesting that uh, Nantucket doesn't try, or maybe they don't practice it, uh, kind of a flip back where Cass catches it and flips it back that's, to Boys. That's a or uh, that's a play. That's a play. And I will say, Dylan White is out here practicing throwing, so that he is taped up and ready to go. Man, that is a tough kid. He's tough. He wants to stay in that. It's, it's good to see that a kid wants to play like that, yeah. And, of course, for Nantucket, Aguilar left the game for a couple of plays, actually a full series, and he did come back and uh, threw a couple of big throws to uh, J.J. Bennett towards the end of the half there. And uh, we hope that he is back to 100%. As both teams, uh, you know, deal with uh, getting dinged up here a little bit, physical game, and uh, the injury bug is uh, hit both quarterbacks a little bit anyway. Now you said West Bridge when it played last night. Do you think uh, they have a scout here somewhere on the field <laughs> with a clipboard writing down? <laughs> Could be. Writing down. Could let's, very well be. Look around the sidelines. See if we see anybody with a clipboard doing some right? writing. Maybe uh, a or little maybe, preview. Or maybe they're just sitting home watching it. <laughs> they could very easily just be doing that. Let's hope they are. And uh, hello to all of you watching us hello, here on hello, NCTV 18. Anybody? West Bridgewater, hello. As we get ready for the third quarter of action, I'd like to say hello to our third quarter sponsor, William Ravis Real Estate. For all your real estate needs on Nantucket, it is William Ravis Real Estate conveniently located right down on Main Street. You like to go say hello to Kenny, our, our Kenny, good friend over there. My buddy Kenny is a uh, fun guy. and uh, He is a great guy. He is a proud, I talked to him about it. He said he's a proud sponsor of Wheel of Sports. So that's nice. That is true. And uh, he, uh, I've actually done a couple of uh, fun little events. They've uh, had some open houses there at the office and uh, a beautiful office if you're walking down on Main Street. It's what used to be the Nobby Shop. The Nobby Shop, yeah. right, right. So Nasik getting ready to kick from our right to left. Once again, Whalers to receive the kickoff here, looking to add to their 9-0 lead. And it'll be Blois and Baden deep, but as uh, Dick mentioned, I don't think it's going to get that think far. It's, I, <laughs> I don't think it's going to get that far. If it's not a pure onside kick, it's going to be a kick just over the front five. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to go. They'd, they'd rather give him the ball at a short 40 than at a gamble. All right, Whalers fans, are you ready for the second half of action? And it is a squibber fumbled and jumped on by Jeremy Cast. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, oh, it was loose on the, on the field, and Nossett has recovered. So... Not a true onside kick, but it works for Nossett. They Coach Herman <laughs> called that one, baby. And unfortunately for Nantucket. I thought I thought Cass padded his, but evidently when, the, when he went on, on yeah. after the ball, it didn't go into his stomach because they called it right away. Yeah, I think a Whalers player was trying to get in on it as well and didn't realize that Cass had a good position, but uh, nonetheless, it'll be first and 10 for Nossett at the Nantucket 35. So if we're gonna have a ball, if we're, gonna have a, if we're gonna have a ball game today, they have to take advantage of this turnover and get some points out of it. Here it is. But once again, Dylan White in the shotgun. He'll hand it off to Julianne, trying the right side, and he's got a little bit of room down to about the 30-yard line. Nasa can live with that. Yeah, five yards on first down, if, bringing up second and five. If he can break the line of scrimmage, it's uh, the situation where Nantucket closes that right at the line of scrimmage, which puts them in the second and third and longs. Right now, they'll take that play all day, keep the, 
keep the bangs off of White. White can't take too many more bangs. Absolutely. Late substitution for the Whalers. Once again, White in the shotgun. Set back to the right is Julian. Two wide receivers to the far side. Try the other side. Breaking a tackle. Julian falls forward for about three-ish. Julian the ball carrier. And he up fell on, a, on the leg of another the the massive player. But they're in four down territory, so oh, it's for third sure. and short. Ball at the 27 yard line, third and about two for Nossett. First possession officially for the second half. The Whalers fumbled the kickoff, and Nossett looking to take advantage. Two wide receivers to the short side, our side of the field. Julian with another handoff, breaks a tackle, but should have enough for a first down. Yeah, he had it on the first spin, and he made a second spin, which gave him another yard or two. So, so they're they going to get it close to the 25. They are feeding Logan Julian as uh, Dylan White is a little banged up at quarterback. Now they're going to say they want to look at it. Looking for a measurement here. Now they say no. Oh, yeah, first down. There you go. I think the official with the glasses on said no. <laughs> we, we don't have to measure that. He's got enough. First and 10, just inside the Whaler 25 yard line. Call it the 24. 10 minutes to play here, 9 0. Julian going to try the right side again. This time it is stuffed. No gain as a gang of whalers key up on Julian now. now they're waiting for that one. Yeah. You can only go to the well so many times. He's gotta, they got to come up with a another play. And the other play basically has been, you know, white rolling out, but we don't know how many roll logs he's got left in him. That's true. But he's a gamer. A lot of room to the right side. That's been one of their best plays, him rolling right. Let's see if they go to it here. Single wide out to the far side. Basically three wide outs and it's White all by himself. He's back to pass. Looking downfield, going deep. Got a man. And it is incomplete. Wow, well defended, but almost a great catch at the goal line. Yeah, he was open, Woo! but the defender That's, came over. That Ray coming over, I yeah, think. Yeah, right at the end, and, poking uh, it away. He, uh, he was open. So, a good throw by White, but uh, Arne Ray able to break it up, bringing up second and 10 here. The clock stops with 9-11, 9-0. Still the score, but the uh, Nosset Warriors are deep inside Whaler territory here, looking to get their first score. They need 10 yards on two plays to uh, get the first down. And play action pass. Now White in trouble, and he will go down. He is not able to run away from anybody. Another sack for the Whalers. That's their third of the game. Again, rolling to the left. Not my so favorite fourth play. <laughs> fourth down and about 12 now for Nossett. They had an interception on their last fourth down attempt down uh, near the goal line there, and that's when Garner Ray took off for about a 175-yard run for, <laughs> yeah, for nothing. For nothing. But now, <laughs> now you got to throw a 12 yard. Got to you know? throw so it. Nantucket's going to set their halfbacks back deep, and uh, he's going to have to really find somebody sort of underneath, but 12 yards, a, a tough call for a high school quarterback. Shotgun formation, two wide outs on either side, another halfback looking to go out in formation. White, back to pass, faces some pressure, and he will not outrun the Whaler defense, decides to throw it away, and that will be a turnover on downs. Oh, flag down. Oh, they're gonna say late hit. That'll give them also the first down. They're gonna say late hit. Late flag, I might add. Late flag, and they're gonna call it a late hit. No, they called a clip on, on Nossett. Oh, so that'll, that'll give Nantucket 15 yards on top of the uh, change of possession. So Nantucket will get the ball out near midfield. I thought he was calling wow, on, yeah, uh, that, on the Nantucket defender for hitting the quarterback. It was the fly out. was thrown right there, but interesting call. So Nantucket will get the turn of possession on downs, and then they'll pick up an extra probably 10 yards. Oh, 
I think. Oh. I think he said a man, a legal man they, downfield. It's, it, no, it was intentional grounding. So loss of down. Whalers get the ball at the 40 yard he, line. He didn't reach First the line and 10. No, no wide receiver in the, in the neighborhood. And it uh, doesn't matter. So Whalers going to have to call a timeout here. Timeout, Whalers. Some uh, miscommunication as they, uh, have, they broke the huddle. I think they only have 10 guys in. Yeah. They were missing a player, yeah, so when they, somebody's going to get chewed yeah, out when on they the line, <laughs> When they lined up, they realized they didn't have an end. With the backs, they realized there wasn't an end in front. Yeah, Aguilar, so. noticing that right away, he was uh, calling for timeout. So the clock stops with 8.03 to play here in the third quarter. Do Whalers think, up 9 nothing. Do you think the officials are watching too many games on Sunday when they call intentional grounding on a, I mean, on a high school uh, quarterback? On fourth fourth down. down. I mean, the dude's just trying not to get hurt. <laughs> and once again, our third quarter of action is brought to us by William Ravis Real Estate. For all your real estate needs on Nantucket, it's William Ravis Real Estate. So Nantucket's over to the sidelines, talking over with the coach. Somebody was getting greened out yeah, for not being out there in the first, first time. Somebody got in trouble for sure. So it will be Aguilar at quarterback. Aguilar Boyce in the backfield. Aguilar and 10 others. Cast, motion to the other side of the field. Gonna be a handoff to Boyce. He cuts it outside, he's got some room. 40, 45, 50, 45, 40. 35, 30, cuts inside, still on his feet. Justin Boyce with some magic and he will take it in for a Whalers touchdown. 60 yards. He's gonna make our MVP choice think, a little easy. I think uh, we don't often call him that early, but uh, 69 yards and he has, he has over 100 yards on, just on his two touchdown runs. And, wow. Uh, again, another pinball run. A pinball run indeed. <laughs> a pinball touchdown run. Ran about 100 yards for 70. And he's got to catch his breath because he's got to kick he's the extra kick point. He's got to kick the extra point. Got to love high school football. This is the perfect time to do a fake yeah. extra fire. point. Yeah, fire. <laughs> Where's just, the fire? Just have 15 the, just, to nothing just like that. Just have the hold to stand up and uh, do a fake. Justin looks winded, but he will try and get this kick off. High snap, down, and Boyce blasts it through. 16 to nothing, the score, 7.44 to go. Lightning has struck. The rain may be away from the island, but man, I'll tell you what, Justin Boyce just put one together. Unbelievable 69 run. yards. Unbelievable run. All the way to the uh, left side of the field as, as we look down towards the school bus. Yep. And then he came, came all the way back to the right side of the field, deking and faking people out all the way across the field. Then picked up a nice block here. Great downfield block to, nice. to put him into the end zone. But man, just a magical run. That is a highlight reel run for sure as the Whalers add to their lead midway, uh, just a little over midway through the third quarter of play here. The count now 16 to nothing, and uh, once again, Justin Bloy is gonna have to kick it off here. <laughs> See if Doing he's got everything. anything left on the tank. Well, if he's not busy, he can go over and help the boost club. That'd be great, yeah. Help the boost club sell some uh, Justin, hats, Justin Boy's hats or something. <laughs> <laughs> It was always one of my favorite calls on the uh, basketball court. I just did JB for three. <laughs> that was JB for six. Actually seven with the extra point. Yeah, he has 14 of the will of extra points. The team shares in the other two points. They all, <laughs> they all right. got one uh, 50th of it. Oh, I guess one 11th And of a them. beautiful kickoff end over end down to the 10 yard line. Up to the 15, 20. Cuts inside and we'll fall ahead to about the 24, 23, 24 yard line, good coverage. Nothing uh, fooled me on that, no, uh, no fair catch. No nothing there, <laughs> incredible. No fair catch, they caught it and brought it back up the field. Decent return, but uh, now the wind is out of their sails. Uh, they've had two chances to get back in this game. First chance, they brought it all the way down. In the first half, sec second chance, they were moving the ball there after getting the break uh, the, uh, on the, the botched uh, 
Sort of onside kick for the Whalers, yeah. but now now the, the seal is at him. It's still a two-score game, but you you got to score twice and you get two two-point conversions. So really, it's a four-score game. Two, uh, call, call order here. Call order for the uh, Warriors of Narset. So it is White still in the game. Set back behind him. And a botched handoff, and White is buried. On, that will probably be another sack, although maybe just a loss on the play. He, uh, he was Sawyer looking. Colby on the tackle for loss there for the Whalers. He was turning one way, and the ball carrier was looking the other way, and uh, boy, Sawyer was right up the middle to gobble him up. And uh, White could ill afford any more hits like that, I'll tell you what. Loss of about six on the play, bringing up second and long for Nossett. Beautiful sunset happening sky, above us here. What a sky, yeah. You, you got and the, a beautiful scoreboard happening you, as well. Got the orange over here, and you look towards uh, Madigan, you can basically see the sun starting. White right back to pass, and he is going to be hit, and that could be a fumble. I think they're going to call that a fumble. Yeah, he didn't put his hand up when he got hit. So I'm going to say that's Wheeler's ball. And it will be first and 10 Whalers deep inside Nossa territory. Looked like he was trying to throw it there, but you know, you were basically sacked. Yeah, he, he, he had the ball up, but he never yeah. brought his arm forward. So a heads up play, number 51, Ryan Downey jumping on the ball for the Whalers. Yet another turnover for Nossa. And the Whalers are in business at the 10 yard line looking to add to their 16-0 lead. I think they can technically get a first down, so it has to be just off the 10. Aguilar, motion in front of him is cast. Blois in the backfield with him. It'll be Aguilar to pass. He's looking for Baden. Got him in the corner. Touchdown, Wheelers! The old back shoulder fade there. Baden looked like he was going to go into the middle. The defender bit for it, and then the ball goes back to the outside. Borden makes the adjustment, catches it nice, already in the end zone, so he just has to go down with it. So Borden's on the scoreboard. 22 to nothing the count, 625 still to play as the Whalers have scored two touchdowns in less than two minutes. But Justin will be back out there looking to go three for three <laughs> on the extra points. Beautiful throw designed for that back shoulder. Aguilar put it right on Baden. Snap good, kick up and good. 23 to nothing the count as the Whalers have broken it open here in the third yeah, quarter. It's uh, lights out for Nossa. They do not have the uh, firepower to come back in this one, especially with the uh, hobbled quarterback. Yep. I'm wondering, uh, I'm wondering if he'll come back out again. I know he wants to. It'll be a coach's decision whether to send them back out there or yeah. I'll go with the backup guy. But either way, a special night here. We are Friday night under the lights officially. It is just gorgeous. Can't tell you how exciting it is. Uh, my first official game here on TV under the lights and it is special. Special. It's, you know, gives you the goosers, baby. That's why we play the game right here. And a beautiful sunset happening over a, overhead and a beautiful scoreboard to go along with it. And there are certainly more fans here. I, I always said, and I do believe it, that people going by see the lights. Yep. They just drive in, you know, drive in and uh, watch the game. And it's interesting. The stands aren't full, but the fans kind of make their way all the way around the entire uh, stadium here Every, along the sidelines. So it, has it, a, is, it is a packed house. Everybody has a spot, yep. a place where they like to stand. And Blois to kick it off here. Slightly shorter kick across the 10 to the 20, 25, 30, a little bit of a hole and slipping. Otherwise, he had some room. Good return for Nossett out across to the 35 yard line. Once again, that is number 33, Robinson. Isaiah Robinson, freshman. Isaiah Robinson, I might add. A lot of freshmen on a Nossett team, young kids like that. Uh, yep. Getting a, a tough baptism here, going against a veteran Nantucket squad. And let's see, Nossett. Uh, 
And it has yeah. shown a little bit. I mean, yeah. obviously they've made some some mental errors and uh, really not uh, played their best. I, I would I would it's safe to say, Coach Strunk not real happy about uh, the overall play. I don't think but, anybody called the timeout. I think the officials just sent them to the sidelines for huh. a drink. At, uh, I didn't Six. see I didn't see a timeout yeah. officially credited to either team. Well, it could have been that water break that the they were supposed break. to take. But <laughs> <laughs> Last year during the COVID, they had the under six official timeout for a water break that sometimes happened. Well, we're close to a 6.20, so it's pretty, we're pretty close to the under six. From their own 35 yard line. So to be first and 10, once again, Nossett in uh, pretty much miracle territory now to come back. Now, the now, the, now their uh, objective is to not get shut up. Yeah. That's basically yeah. what it is. Let's get, get, one. get one drive into the end zone. Going to be motion in front and a handoff, trying the far side of the field and a nice run on first down. Once again, that is uh, freshman Isaiah Robinson, who had a nice uh, kickoff return, gets a nice little run on first down. That's about seven or eight yards, seven yards, call it. Knocked him out there. Right in front of us, so it's going to bring Six up yards, second in about three, second and four. And he did get out of bounds, so the clock did stop here with 6-12 to play, still in the third quarter. Again, shotgun formation. And it'll be a handoff to Julian. He tries the up the middle just to the right side and uh, not much doing, but he'll pick up a couple, bringing up a third and short. It's gonna be third and one. Uh, again, Nossett is not gonna uh, punt it here if they don't get the one yard. They have gone to that play quite a bit, that little quick hit to Julian up the middle. It's Tonight, worked occasionally, but uh, now they only need one yard, so. One yard, they, they, they may go back to it, and it may not work if they do go back to it, because Nantucket has stuffed them in the hole plenty of times. Third and one. Again, handoff up the middle, and tripped up at the line, but falling forward for enough for the first down is Julian, and uh, he is holding that leg. And players taking a knee, as once again, a NASA player banged up with 5.30 to play here. 23 to nothing, our score from Vito Capizzo Stadium. Once again, happy to be here. I am Chris Morris, Dick Herman, the best enjoy, color guy in the biz, baby. Enjoying, enjoying the uh, view, enjoying the game, and uh, enjoying being here with you. NCTV doing a great job, and uh, glad to be part of it. And the colors are exploding off I know it. to the and west here as uh, the sun is kind of setting on Nosset's hopes, as well as on our lovely island we call home here. What's that uh, phrase? Uh, red skies at night, sailors. Sailors delight, delight baby. And they're enjoying it tonight. For sure. As announcers, we are enjoying it. We're not even sailing. So, the stalwart who has carried the load here for Nosset. Logan Julian hobbling off the field under his own power, though, so he should be back. We'll have to see what uh, what they work on here on the sideline. Might just be a cramp. He has been a workhorse, He's to say the, the least. He's been the guy, right. Another handoff to number 14. That's Joey Berardi. Julian's replacement, and he falls forward for a nice gain. Give him maybe five. Second down and about five for he's, Nossett he's as they only, he's only a freshman too. Break into Whaler territory at the 47-yard line. Nossett uh, lost their open a 42 to nothing to Pembroke, yeah. and then came back last week and made a game at losing to Hopkins 19 to eight. They head over to play Mashpee next week at Mashpee. Yeah, Another that will be a challenge yeah. for them for sure. Once again, White in the shotgun, and he hands it off. Not much doing there. May give him a yard, maybe two, and that is once again Berardi on the carry. Man. 
noticeable hobble. Yeah, it's getting uh, it's getting uh, more noticeable each, each time, too. So Third no about four, but as we know, it's four down territory. Pretty much anywhere on the field for Dawson. Four, four down territory for the rest of the day, right. Yeah. But the, the, the play options are really limited with uh, the main running back on the ground yeah. over here and the quarterback hobbling around on the field. So third and three, call it. White back to pass. Still looking, throwing, and it is caught. Nice catch wow. in some heat. He put that right in there. Good a throw. Best pass on the night there for Nossett. Owen White on the reception. He is also a freshman. But a good throw in double coverage. Bodden in on the tackle as well as Murphy. But a note, White got hit after he yeah. threw the ball. Uh, not an illegal hit, but uh, takes, takes another whack. First and ten. Ball at the Whaler 36-yard line. And it'll be another run by Berardi inside, and he is lucky to get one, maybe two on first down. Clock continues to run. We are just about under three minutes in the third quarter. A third quarter that, sees, that has seen the Whalers score twice. Yeah, scored uh, one touchdown in the first quarter, and then uh, nothing in the second quarter, but bounced back here with uh, two, and you said what, within a min minute or so of each yeah, other? Just over a minute, yeah, a couple minutes of play. Blois, and then the touchdown throw off of the fumble deep in Nasa territory. And it'll, oh my goodness, yeah. they're trying to give you White the ball there. You, I got to think that's a mistake. You can't, you can't run that play. You can't run that play. Not with, not with him. Murphy ate him up. That is a loss of about seven, bringing up third and long. I mean, it's call it third and 15. It's painful just to watch him come over and get the play. It really is. <laughs> it's just, you feel for the kid because he's a gamer and he yeah. wants to stay in there. But you almost think that he's hurting his team at this point. Well, the option of him running the ball after the fake, now that the Nantucket defense knows yeah. that he's not making a fake, and even if he does make the fake, yeah, let him run. He, he's, he's not going to go anywhere anyways. Yeah. He's not going to outrun anybody. So call it third and 13. 150 to play here in the third quarter. White controlling some traffic, and a low snap gets behind him. He's going to have to dive on it at about the 49-yard line, and that will bring up fourth down and long. They're going to have punt. to punt. They're going to have to I heard Coach Strunk call for the punt. So another bad snap leads to a punt here on fourth and very, very long for Nossett. Down 23 to nothing. They'll be lucky to get it back to the, uh, the first down marker. They don't want to get it any further because yep. one of the pinball guys is going to pick it up <laughs> and stop running. Pinball wizards, I believe. <laughs> a good song let's, from the Who. Let's see where this kick goes. Ball at the 50-yard line. Good snap, quick kick, and a good kick. We're going to have a potential return. Boyce gets it at the 10, weaving his way to the 15, and wrangle down just around the 20. So good punt coverage. But the Whalers will get the ball back with a 23 to nothing lead. 46 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Duncan Lowry, a junior tight end linebacker, made sure uh, Justin did not get any room to run that time. Made a good tackle. Nice coverage on that play. After a short return. So basically like a touchback, first and 10 for the Whalers at their own 20. Some confusion on defense. Nosset finally getting set. J.J. Bennett with some motion out to the short side of the field. Aguilar awaiting the snap. Motion behind him, and it will be Bodden looking to get the corner. He's got the corner to the 30, 35 to the 40. Great run from Makai Bodden on the end around. Out to the 42. 24 on out. So Bodden gets, uh, I think that's his first run of the day. It is his first run of the game. Of course, he caught a touchdown earlier in the quarter. 
on a back shoulder pass from Aguilar, but that is his first run of the game. And I would assume that Nantucket's going to keep the ball on the ground the rest of the way here. Try and use up some clock. They could probably not snap this here and uh, get to the end of the quarter, but uh, they are lining up ready to go with 10 seconds to play here in the third. Aguilar with Blois in the backfield. Or Francis in the backfield. Throwing it up, Bennett has got it at the 40 yard line and he breaks a tackle, gets an extra four yards. Again, just throw it up to that guy and he will come down with it. Sure hands and six foot seven frame. That's a 28 yard pass play. Another great catch from J.J. Bennett. Good catch there and I was surprised that they threw it, but that ends the quarter. So the teams will head to the sidelines and the officials will Change the uh, the ball going the other way. 12 minute quarters. Uh, haven't mentioned that tonight, but that uh, that adds 20% uh, more yeah. to these uh, playing times for these uh, kids. And uh, by the third or fourth game, you should be used to it. Yeah. But, uh, it, it is a it is a difference. It sounded like again I, talking to a couple of the coaches against Mashby last week boys ran out of steam in that fourth quarter and that led to a couple of big runs and kind of that lopsided score uh, but it's exactly what you're talking about and again Nauset doesn't have depth like Nantucket does they don't have a lot of fresh bodies to sub in and out um, so that that fatigue will come into play and you see a lot of the coaches and uh, substitute players bringing in those water bottles for those starters to keep hydrated and try and avoid cramps here as we have uh, 12 minutes to play at Vito Capizzo Stadium. 23 to nothing, Whalers up big third quarter, and uh, they are on the move once again. But if you were playing on the last year's uh, clock, there'd be yeah. only four minutes left in the game. That's true. Quite a difference. That's quick math, too, by <laughs> Mr. Herman here. And I didn't even have to take off my You did not. No, no, I just, I no just, calculators, just, no notes, no nothing. No carry in the ones. <laughs> All in the head, buddy. All right. Well, it certainly looks gorgeous under the lights here at Vito Capizzo Stadium. Helps that we're up 23 to nothing, but it is special when you get to play under the lights here. Aguilar awaiting the snap. He'll hand it off. This is the first run by Jaquan Francis, and he's breaking tackles for another first down run. This is the time when Coach Perry can get to see some other players in the backfield. some new people in there. And Jaquan Francis is another one of those basketball stars. He is fast and athletic. Just a sophomore as well. Only a sophomore. So we've get to see him for quite a bit here. He'll have to come off the field. Uh, a little bit of an equipment problem. His shoe came off. You don't want to run a play without your shoe on, no. So it is Blois and Aguilar bringing the play in. First and 10 Whalers at the 23 yard line of Nauset. Once again on the move. A couple of big plays from Makai Bodden and Jaquan Francis. JJ Bennett with a big catch. And the Whalers looking to add to their lead. Aguilar gets the snap, facing some pressure, puts it up and into double coverage. Almost coming down with it, though, was Makai Bodden. I think the uh, Nasa players were playing Bodden, not the ball, and uh, they overran the play, and yeah. Bodden almost came up with that back shoulder catch once again. One player, uh, one of the defenders looked like he put his hand over the ball. Yeah. And the ball somehow became almost catchable for Bodden. Nonetheless, second and 10. I'm a little surprised they're passing the I'm, ball, I'm, but. I'm very surprised. Not a little, very. What do we know? We're just <laughs> a couple of guys with some mics up here <laughs> enjoying the scenery. If you don't say something that gets under their skin, you don't know, <laughs> you don't know if they're listening. You gotta, you gotta say something and then, 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 then you know they're listening to you. Jaquan Francis in the backfield once again. And it'll be Bodden on that end around. He's got some room to run. Catches the edge, flag down, however, and it is Bodden very close Bodden to the, the end zone. Area. But this is going to come back. Looks like a block on the back. holding or an illegal block on, on the, the Whalers. Yep, holding is holding the call. The so once again, another great play for Nott. But the Whalers have had plenty to celebrate tonight as they are up 23 to nothing and looking to add to that lead. 
That'd be another great stat to have. How many yards were taken away, taken away by yeah. penalties? Our fourth quarter of play is brought to us by our good friends out west, Matticut Marine, serving Nantucket and its waters for 50 years. Got to say a quick shout out to my good buddy, Chris Shannon, who does magical work out there on all those boats. Unbelievable how many they take care of. So second Ooh. and long and Aguilar buried, but uh, a good run. As I believe that is Caden Shea, isn't Shea it? on Shea. the ball yeah. carry. And he got almost all of that yardage right back. Yeah, he Great uh, run uh, by Caden Shea for 18 yards, 17 he was, yards. He was bullying his way. Boy, Aguilar took the uh, hit in, in the backfield. Yeah. Carlos, Carlos was uh, stood up and knocked down. I was kind of watching him, and Shea world. was scampering through a huge hole, and a great run for 17 yards. He's been all over the field, both sides of the ball, as usual. Yep. So well, I know, I know you're going to give the MVP. <laughs> I'm going to give my three stars. There you go. There you go. And then you give your MVP. And uh, Aguilar hands it off to Francis. He goes up against a couple of Nosset defenders, and they toss him backwards. He may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but that's about it. Bringing up a fourth down here. And we'll see what happens with 9.30 to play here in the fourth quarter if Coach Perry tries a pretty long field goal, actually, or whether they just uh, decide to keep the clock would, running here. That would be a good, uh, good practice uh, situation if they want to do it. It is. I think they are, no? Fourth and two at about the 15-yard line. And it is Blois going to try a field goal here. Thirty-five yard attempt here. Yeah, this is this is real good practice. I like this call. I like this call. Got plenty of leg. This will be for the hat trick. And the uh, kick is low and no good. Not his best effort. But again, a a, a good try. So Noss will take over and downs. They'll pick up the uh, extra seven yards there, getting the ball at the spot of the mixed uh, field goal. That's uh, that's one thing that you uh, you got to remember when you when you do that. In a high school game, I don't think it's a big stat at all. No. But uh, when you're watching the uh, the pro guys do it on Sunday, it, yep. it's a, a mighty big stat when you give them an extra seven yards when you're kicking a long field goal. So, so let's see if Nantucket starts putting uh, some new guys in on defense here now. I would think so. I would think this is a good opportunity for that, to say the least. And they have some mix-up already. A couple of players uncovered, but it doesn't matter because Nawson's going to hand it off. And uh, the Whalers are up to the task. Short gain for Nawson just across the 20 to the 22. Clock continuing to run. I think they have a, uh, a, few, a few new guys in there. Yeah. They're going to start substituting... Uh, And, and I it think is Dylan White hobbling over once again to get the play. I thought they were taking him out, but no, he's just coming over to get the play and going back in. So barring an absolute miracle, Nantucket going to move to two and one here on the season with a dominating victory over Nosset. White in a shotgun formation. He will get back to pass, facing a blitz. And looking, finally throwing, tipped and incomplete, out of bounds. I don't know if he held on to that or not, but he was pushed out of bounds. So they're gonna nice say, defensive play. You can say incomplete. And it'll bring up a third and still 10 yards to go for the first down. And we just heard field hockey playing uh, the vineyard tomorrow, yeah, so big, good luck uh, to big, our kids. Yeah, big vineyard day tomorrow yeah. as uh, th I think three of our teams will go. I think there you go. soccer and uh, field hockey will head over, head over there. I am going to go to my first cross-country meet on Tuesday. Oh, there you go. And I'll tell you the reason why. We'd love to hear that after this play. After this play, we'll, that's the... Uh, 
the bait. You have gotta stay tuned for this play. That's right. <laughs> White back to pass, facing pressure, He's trying to get out of the likes of a couple of whalers. Now throwing deep in between coverage. Incomplete, and that'll bring up fourth down. Why are you going off to see some cross country? Do tell. Cross country, no, I'm going to go to the cross country meet here. Tuesday, the Nantucket Boys Cross Country Team is going against the Cape Cod Academy uh -huh. Cross Country Team. And I have a grandson in the eighth grade at Cape Cod Academy there who will be go. running for Cape Cod Academy. And I heard it's out uh, off the Gardner property, out on right. the yep. Pond Road. So yep. I will get out there and uh, cheer him on. I may not be rooting for the will of There you go. Day. One guy. Just one just guy. One That's guy. okay. Just we'll one allow guy. that. We'll allow that. <laughs> cheering for him. So Nossett will be forced to punt here again. It is his fourth and ten. Again, might as well get the practice in. The game is out of hand. Good snap and a good kick. End over end or kind of a wobble. Uh, takes a nice bounce and it is touched. Baden going to field it at the 45-50. Breaking tackles. 45-40. Look out. And Baden. Catches the edge, and he will run in for a Whalers touchdown. No flags. No flags. So we finally get a pinball score. <laughs> and I'm going to say that's about a 55 yard. 55, 56, we'll call it. Right in front of us, he picked it up. It uh, hit the ground, and he touched it, gathered it in, and uh, pinballed his way into the end zone. Once he caught the edge, that was it. There was no chance. A lone defender out there looked looked uh, pretty overwhelmed trying to bring down Mackay Baden all now, by your lonesome. Now, is the assistant coach for Nossett chumming up to the head coach saying, I told you we should have went for it? <laughs> you got to think. I mean, what are they going to lose? It wouldn't have cost them a touchdown. It would have cost them six points. I know that. 29 to nothing, the score as we speak. It'll be Justin Blois, who just missed a field goal, trying to attempt the extra point. He's three he has for been three and extra perfect points. thus far. An exclamation point to say the least for the Whalers. Snap, kick, good, and we are 30 to nothing now with still 7-14 to play in the fourth quarter. The Whalers well on their way to a victory here in front of a very boisterous home crowd. It's pretty dark in that end zone uh, where, the, where the yeah extra point come down. What are the odds that uh, that ball does not find its way back <laughs> onto the field? Well, <laughs> Bunch of middle school kids? A couple of kids may run away. I don't see anybody running yet, but. Oh, there it goes. Somebody <laughs> returned it. The kid in the blue shirt. There you go. Oh, uh, the red shirt, the red shirt one. Oh, on Nantucket. All Nantucket all day, I'll tell you what, it has been a second half of huge plays. Yeah, the first half started out with the uh, the safety and then the quick touchdown after the safety, good field position, 9-0, and it sat that way all the way into the uh, third quarter when uh, Nantucket has just wiped them out with uh, 21 uh, more points in a row. 30 to nothing the score. And uh, again, you gotta gotta think some substitutes are going to be on the field here for non, for Nantucket. A great opportunity for some younger it's, kids it's to get some game time and speed. Two, as a coach, you want to uh, reward your kids sure. who bang heads yeah. day in and day out in practice, yep. going against the first team. Give them a chance to go out there and bang somebody other than the. Uh, the first team seniors that are ahead of you. And you can't fake game time speed. I mean, kids are, this is go time, and uh, as much practice as you do, as, as many scrimmages as maybe you have in your squad, it's not game time. It's not under the lights, baby. No. It's not with the crowd screaming at you. Well, we still have the first team yeah, kickoff first team, team here with Justin uh, handling it. And he boots a line drive. I guess that he's bounces getting... at the 20, through the legs and out of bounds, but I think he touched it. If he touched it, it's their ball. So, if he didn't touch it, they get it at the 40. Let's see what they rule. It looks like they touched it, so it will be Nossett ball, yet another miscue on special teams as he tried to pick it up. Should have just let it go. If I was, if I was the official, I would say he didn't touch it. Give the ball, <laughs> give the ball on the 40. Come on. 
The mercy rule. The mercy from rule. Dick Herman here. <laughs> God. First and ten, just inside the twenty. Call it the eighteen yard line of Nosset as they get the ball back here with 7-11 to play in what has turned out to be a blowout for the Whalers. I was, I'll tell you. Another handoff Nothing. and catching the edge and a nice run getting to that second level. That is once again, freshman running back Joey Berardi. Back in, back in the 90s, I, I did some uh, softball umpiring. Okay. And uh, most most time was the base. I never got behind the plate. Right. But every once in a while, I'd get uh, I'd get a game alone, especially yep. a JV game. Sure, sure. And I'd be out behind the mound <laughs> yep. calling, calling the balls and strikes. I'll finish that story after this play. White still in the game. And he will get the pet, get the hand off, uh, get the shotgun snap, and it is Berardi caught behind the line there. Nice play. So I'm out behind yeah. the mound calling balls and strikes. Yep. And I, I call a strike, which was clearly not a strike. <laughs> and the, uh, the the batter says to me, "That wasn't a strike. It was way out of the strike zone." And I said, "Yep." And the next one's going to be a strike too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling it a strike now before he throws it. So you better, you, go. you better swing, better swing the bat, kid. You're up there to swing the bat. There you go. I'm watching these kids in front White of me. Once again, Tons. gets the snap and hands it off. Nice run up the middle. Berardi breaking tackles. Mm. And that will be very close to a first down. Should be enough. Great run by Berardi there as he has gotten some action here late. Joey Berardi, again, just a freshman for Nosset, and they give him the first down. There's your mercy rule. Here's At least get the first down. Give him the first down. 540 and counting here. Right, right now the Nosset team, team is saying, let's break the shuttle. Something. Let's take it the length of the field. Got to work, get something here to build on. White directing traffic. Berardi in the backfield. Gets the handoff and we'll try it up the middle. He breaks it free. Across the 45. And out to about the 47. Another nice run. About eight yards on that play. He's a quick little runner there for a freshman. He is. I, I like him. I like him an awful lot. I know he's going against uh, a lot of the uh, second team here, but he came in and had a nice couple yeah. of nice runs when the first team was still in there. Yep. And again, take advantage of your uh, opportunity, and he is doing so quite nicely. He is getting some good uh, work in. And as I say, he's only a freshman. Notice yep. it's, uh, these kids uh, stick with the program. They're going to be tough down the road, getting a lot of experience in their freshman year. Absolutely. Once again, Berardi in the backfield with White. He'll get the carry to the right side and trying to cut the corner. And he will break a tackle and do so. Nice run once again. First down for Nosset. Ball at the Whaler end of the field at the 42-yard line. Almonte in on the tackle. Doesn't matter whether they go out of bounds or not. The clock is clock running. Clock is continuing, yep. So Noss has got to hurry if they want to get to the end zone. And Berardi able to get the edge there and uh, break a, a hand tackle and ultimately picked up a first down at the Whaler 42-yard line. He's got some speed, but he's, he uh, he's tough. The tough little kid. Keep feeding it. I mean, Whalers haven't stopped him yet. Once again, Berardi, and they get a got jersey shirt, tackle right there at the line of scrimmage. Shirt tail tackle there by uh, Hunter Paglia. He's senior. Hunter Defense. Paglia, yeah. Paglia, Paglia. Sorry, sorry, Hunter. Hunter made a nice uh, grab of the shirt there. Well, I'm yeah. going to give you. I'm going to give you my three stars, and then you come up with the MVP. My uh, number three star is going to go to Caden Shea. My number two star is going to go to Micaiah Borden. And my number one star is going to go to Justin Boyd. There you go. There you go. You'll have to wait till the post-game report.
to find out who the actual MVP is, but uh, those are the three guys that have stood out, certainly on offense, and uh, Caden Shea on defense as well, and Justin Boyce on special teams is, as well. Uh, Stop and Shop still part of that promotion? They're a part of uh, their own MVP. The the Whalers pick their MVP. It's like the player of the week. Player of the week. So that's the, that's who gets the awarded Willa, the $50 the gift certificate thing. Okay, that's nice. Another handoff here. Guess who? Joey Berardi. Close to a first down, bringing up fourth and just a couple of yards as we have gotten down to about 2.30 to play here and counting fourth and two for Nossett. Let's see if Nantucket can keep him out of the end zone and hold on to that shutout. If they want 30 the, to nothing they want the, the score right now. Stopping them here would be the start of it. Yep. Fourth and two. Berardi up the middle. He will have the first down and more. Oh, horse collar tackle. That's going to be a personal foul. Almonte guilty of the penalty there. So that'll stop the clock and give him 15 yards on top of that run for first down. That's for gonna, Nossett. That's going to put it down inside the 20. Let's see where they mark it to. Yep. Nossett should have uh, two plays called there. So they can get their crack at breaking the shutout. And once again, our fourth quarter of play is brought to you by Madiket Marine, our good friends out to the west of the island there, serving Nantucket and its waters for 50 years. Yeah, it's a big one. Yeah, that is a big one. Again, the shutout in jeopardy now as the ball is all the way down at the 14-yard line of Nantucket, first and 10 for Nossett. And he winds the clock, so they got to hurry. If the coach uh, was smart, he would have given him two plays yep. so he doesn't have to hobble back to him. And, yep. uh, and they only up. have one timeout. They had to use two timeouts earlier in the third quarter. So another handoff. This is number 24 down inside the 10. So a good run on first down, but the clock is now ticking. Yeah, the coach pointed at the quarterback, said just do it. The Second down and about five. Calling his own right now. Yep. And a Whaler player trying to run off before it gets snapped. White hands it off, trying the right side and punched out of bounds by Almonte. They're going to line Maybe right up. Maybe a couple up. of yards there. Clock stops with 1.22 to play. Well, it's going to start right Game. up again. They get a well at hand by the Whalers. They will walk away with a huge victory over Nossett, moving their record to 2-1 and one on the season. With a big one coming up next week, right back here, Saturday afternoon, 2.30 for West Bridgewater. Should be a great game, another non-conference game, but a stiff challenge to say the least. And another handoff up the middle, and Nantucket ready for that one. And that will bring up another fourth down. Now let's see what they got. Fourth and about what? Four. Fourth and short, but I think they're trying to get a, get a score here, something to build on. With the clock continuing to run under one minute to play in the fourth quarter. This spread out, but I don't think he'll throw it, but what? He is going to throw it. There's a it. pass way over the head of everyone and yeah. incomplete, and that will do it as Nantucket will take over and run the clock out here with just 35 seconds to play. I would say they put the knee down, but they might let the second team run one play That's here. true. That is true. So stay tuned as we will bring you a post-game report with a quick recap. We've got one play left here. Yeah, we're looking at it as, out of the corner of our eye here, peeking out. <laughs> 36 seconds to play as the uh, 
Whalers look to take a knee here and uh, put a capper on what has been a dominating effort against Nosset. A handoff, Jaquan Francis catches the edge and he's got nothing but green out in front of him. 50, 40, 35, 30, what an exclamation point. Whalers, touchdown. 90 yards, Jaquan Francis to the house. I thought you said he was putting a knee down. You, you faked me out. <laughs> he faked us all out. I think he faked out the Does defense. he get a star for that? He is. The Holy goal. smokes. I told you he had some speed and he got to the edge and that was it. Wow. We're back out of the post game booth. Back out of the booth. Back to the window. That one. Back to the window. I got to think that uh, the offensive coordinator will be part of our post game show, Tim Saradellis. He dialed up a heck of a good game. Well, Nelson has to be a little upset with that, but it, it's your second team running a, a basic play, which should have been the last play of the game, but uh, they couldn't tackle him. And he goes uh, 90, 90 plus yards to put it to 36 to nothing. And they'll probably go for two here only because <clears throat> So we were getting all set up to do our post-game report here. Jaquan Francis rips off about a 90-yard touchdown. We are going to try and get Coach Tim Saradellis, the offensive coordinator of the Whalers, for a post-game interview. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, Dick and I will recap the game here. And uh, we got a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about today. <laughs> wow. What a show they put on. 30 Six to nothing right now, looking for two. Why not practice that? Amonte's gonna run it in easily, I think. And he's got the corner for a two-point conversion to put the exclamation point on the game. Again, 19 seconds to go. And there will be a kickoff upcoming. 38 to nothing now, the score. And uh, lightning struck more than once here tonight. Man, I'll talk tell you about, what, big talk, play ability. Talk about, talk about big plays. The, uh, we knew the that shortest. they had that option. The, the we knew shortest, that that was there. The shortest play was the uh, the 10-yard back shoulder of the ball. And Beautiful pass, yeah. Anything after that is, uh, all, all the scores have been in double digits, right? <laughs> On Nantucket, they're singing, and that's for sure. As you said, 38 to nothing. And they're just gonna let the clock run and they're not gonna have the kickoff. So that will do it. Clock winds down and there is no uh, final kickoff. So I think there was a, a little bit of, a, like we said, uh, mercy rule there. Yeah, mercy rule plus, I don't think NASA was too happy with that, but again, it was not a play that they were trying to score on. It was a play that they were running with uh, backup players to uh, run the final 30 seconds off the clock. Yeah, literally one play, and, and uh, Francis ended up breaking it free for a, a huge gainer uh, as the kids are congratulating themselves on a, a great effort, really, by both teams. And uh, once again, Chris Morris and Dick Herman here for our post-game report for NCTV 18, celebrating a big victory, big, 38 big, to nothing. Big victory, right. Nantucket goes to a 2-1. Uh, we're 2-0. Oh. We yeah, we win. are 2-0, oh, right? We're 2-0 oh in this booth, so this is the lucky booth. Put us in this booth, <laughs> there and we'll, you go. we'll keep bringing wins. And, That's uh, right. But a lot of, lot of stars out there. Yeah. I mentioned three guys, but it's more than three guys. It's uh, 15, 20 guys. The whole team had a great game. Yeah, big big team win uh, against, again, the score not indicative really of, of the efforts that were uh, made by the Nauset uh, Warriors. And uh, our post-game report brought to us by our good friends at Dune Restaurant and Bar right down on Broad Street. Michael and his crew always doing deliciousness. And uh, you have gone oh, down there and had some great meals. I've great had meal. some great meals there. Great meals and uh, we thank 
Mike and his crew for sponsoring our post-game report as the Whalers are fired up as well. They should be huge plays all about. Justin Blois got into the act with two. He had a 44-yard touchdown run and a 69-yarder. Uh, Makai Bodden had a touchdown reception and a 56-yard punt return. And Jaquan Francis put the stamp on it with a 90-yarder to basically end the game. <laughs> he was just trying well, to run out the clock. But Jaquan ruined it because his wasn't a pinball run. That's true. That's true. It was a true, foot, straight a true sprint football down the field. run. Just straight speed, turning the corner and turning on the burners. So we actually have a, a special segment here in our post-game report. It looks like we have uh, Coach Sim, Tim Saradellis uh, coming up. Uh, and uh, we'll stay tuned for uh, our on-field uh, interview. But uh, honestly, we got to come up with an MVP. Well, I go told you my three stars. You got three stars. So you can, you can, uh, you can. I'm gonna use, go with my you, boy. You can win one. You can use one of those, and okay. you can pick your own. I'm yeah. gonna have to go with Justin Boyce. Yes. He got things going for us. He was my and, number uh, one star. Yeah, so he was your number agreed. one anyway. Uh, 44 yard touchdown pass, 69 yard touchdown or 44 yard touchdown run, 69 yarder as well, doing a little pinball on both of those, and of course, perfect on his kicks from uh, the extra points. Did miss one field goal, but. You know, it was a long field goal anyway, so we'll wipe that one off. But Justin Blois is our Whalers MVP. And, uh, you know, he, again, could have went to Makai Bodden easily. He had a couple of scores. And uh, Jaquan Francis got in on the fun with his 90-yard sprint and, to and, Pater. And you forget those guys in the trenches, you know, the, the offensive line, defensive line. A lot of banging. You don't always yeah. get your name called. But you got to have those kids blocking and tackling to make the team go. And they did, a, did the job tonight, shutting out Noss. Absolutely. Big, a much bigger school. Yeah, and Coach Perry is always preaching that winning those one-on-one -on -one battles. And uh, again, you mentioned it, those plays don't even get to happen unless there are holes, unless they are open, right. you know? And, uh, and it's those big boys in the trenches that, that win those games don't quite get <laughs> <laughs> the notoriety of a 90-yard touchdown run. Uh, but it is a huge team win again here at Vito Capizzo Stadium, 38 to nothing the final. As we get uh, the players doing their post-game ritual, uh, getting a little speech, and uh, congratulations uh, goes out to the entire team and Coach Perry and his uh, entire staff uh, as they get ready to uh, face West Bridgewater right here next week. Uh, uh, Saturday will be the game, and uh, we have a kickoff around 2:30. Uh, so our coverage starts around two o'clock, two so which will be great. We'll have a little post game, our pre game report, get you all set up for the action next Saturday as the Whalers look to move to three and one on the season with another non conference game, uh, and then they get into some conference action with uh, Sandwich coming up, and of course the Vineyard, Monomoy. We kind of have washed that, yeah, but uh, wash, you know. Right. And I looked at the long-range uh, weather forecast. And, uh, okay, you expect, got it? Expect rain next Saturday. Rain next Saturday? Is that what it is? Oh, <laughs> just, no. Just like we had tonight. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Again, I'm only jealous of weathermen because, man, they get it wrong all the time and uh, still have a job. You and I get it wrong, well, we get a, we're talking to at least. <laughs> but uh, a great win for the Whalers. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you here uh, next Saturday. You can catch this game, however, once again on Sunday at 9 o'clock. Uh, get up, have your coffee, coffee and uh, maybe coffee a little with, bagel. Coffee and, with uh, Dick and Chris. Right? And hang out with, <laughs> with uh, Dick and I, and uh, we'll bring you all the action. Again, a great way to start your football Sunday for sure. So uh, 38 to nothing, uh, a dominating, dominating yeah, yeah. win yeah. Uh, pretty much from the opening snap. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they were in control the whole way. They took took advantage of the mistakes that Noss had made. They made a couple of mistakes, but they, they covered them up and didn't let Noss had score. And yeah. That's huge. And really, you know, that last little drive at the end, you were thinking, now nah, maybe they're going to get the sh break the shutout. But uh, fortunately for the kids, because that's like a, a, a an shut ego. Out, shut out is nice. Yeah. Shut out is great. Yeah, it really builds up the defense. Yeah. And you can say we shut them out. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and as much as... As we're, uh, you know, celebrating the offense, defense did a heck of a job. A shutout is a shutout. And even the second team kids can come in there and say we were part of the shutout yeah. because they kept them off the board. On Absolutely. The Absolutely. So I think we are getting set for 
our on-field interview with uh, offensive coordinator Tim Saradellis. I'm uh, just awaiting the word that Tim is all set and ready to go. I think he is, uh, he's got some interesting uh, tidbits, I'm sure. Tidbits to talk uh, Behind the scenes of uh, what was getting called there. And uh, I, gotta, I would ask him if they were just going to down the ball there at the end. But you know, I'm glad they <laughs> were was, able to get Francis talk, loose on that one. Who was talking to him down there? Do we uh, know? We have actually a special on-field analyst. Analyst. Ready to go. And, and we are almost ready to hand it over to uh, <laughs> Frank Shad, who is... Uh, Frank Shad. Actually... Does that rhyme with cod? Our, it does rhyme, <laughs> rhyme with cod. Shad rhymes and, with cod. And he's Liberty actually... Liberty Mutual doesn't rhyme with no, anything. No, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Always fun times with you, Dick. Always fun times. Uh, but he is... He has got Coach Sim, Tim Saradellis, our offensive coordinator, the Whalers offensive coordinator, uh, with our on-field interview. Frank Schad going to head you down to the field on NCTV 18's presentation of Whalers football. Coach Tim, thanks for in the interview. Uh, tonight's win gives the Whalers a winning record for the season. Uh, how pleased are you with the team's progress at this point early in the season? Uh, very pleased. Actually, the uh, speech I just gave was in relation to how they're able to communicate what's going on on the field, which speaks to their preparedness. They're, they're understanding what they're supposed to be doing and able to communicate to me if things aren't working, and then I can make adjustments accordingly. So that progress from week one to now is huge because they weren't able to do that week one. So that's a big, a big thing for them to be able to do that now. And, and they certainly did make adjustments at halftime. Absolutely. Yeah, they made big adjustments. We made some changes with our tight end alignment based on what we were seeing. And the communication had to be on the fly because it wasn't part of our, our plan this week. So they had to take information from two, three weeks ago and implement it on the spot, which is a big, big ask for them, and they pulled it off. Well, that shows good preparation by the coaching staff, so uh, good job to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the offense uh, running and passing and the defense both – looked very good at times um, what areas what areas do you still think need improvement or the most improvement just fundamentals just footwork with blocking o-line blocking back blocking so the basics so we our playbook has all the bells and whistles we need it's just a question of executing the fundamental footwork stuff that we need to keep working on every week well that's a good position to be in uh, in the second season of covid how did uh, the restrictions affect your preparation for this season? Uh, there's, we're still feeling the effects from that. Nantucket was in a, a heightened state during COVID relative to other places. So our restrictions were more severe than most. We weren't allowed in the weight room for 18 months. We weren't allowed really much contact with the kids except out here on the field with minimal football play. So it definitely took a toll on us physically in terms of our weight room preparation, which is extremely important at all levels but high school especially so that's shown up quite a bit last week's game was a, a an example of that that a team that was able to be in the weight room versus one that wasn't um, plays a big part when you have four quarters especially some of these longer quarters um, if our kids aren't physically strong enough it's gonna all the fundamentals in the world start to break down after four quarters so that affected us for sure in terms of in implementing the x's and o's um, the kids have picked right up on it. That hasn't been as much of an issue. So it's more the physical preparation. And that will come along with the season as you right. do more of that. Um, you, I was particularly impressed with the perseverance of the team. You stopped that long drive at the end of the first half, right. and uh, you kept other drives from getting the momentum back uh, to uh, Nauset. I think that's good preparation. Do you do you stress that when you're training with the team? Yeah, so that's Coach Mark on the defense who does an unbelievable job breaking everything down, every detail, and then providing those details to the kids through on-field and then and through meetings that the kids have to see all this stuff broken down on film. So they've seen everything this team was going to do day in and day out for the past weeks. So there's no surprises. So um, what you saw with those stops is just executing what they've been taught all week so it was kind of what we expected well uh great preparation always leads to good results so congratulations on a great win great thank you so much take care thank you. Yes. and we'd like to welcome you back to vita capito stadium thanks very much to our on-field analyst
Frank Shad, and of course, offensive coordinator Tim Saradellis. And we'd like to thank you for watching Nantucket Community Television's live coverage of Whalers football. And we want to extend a heartfelt thanks to all of our sponsors. Your continued support makes this broadcast possible, benefits our island student athletes, and makes this game accessible to all you Whalers fans out there. We want to give special thanks to our key sponsors, Mind's Eye Communications, Madiket Marine, Eight Arms Chef Services, Nantucket Bank, and William Ravis Real Estate, and Dune Restaurant and Bar. And of course, if you are streaming this on YouTube and want any uh, more information on those businesses, you can click in the description right there in YouTube. And if you are interested in sponsoring our broadcast, you can email me at chrism at nctv18.org. And I cannot leave the camera without thanking our crew. Got the best crew in the biz here. Our director of this broadcast, Frank Shad. Our camera operators, Katie O'Connor and Charlie Hoyleman, and the scoreboard technician, Burton Balkine. And a special thanks have to go out to Sue and Marty Oliveri for their internet help. And uh, our next Whalers broadcast, as I said, next Saturday right here as the Whalers will host West Bridgewater. Kickoff slated for 2.30. You can join us at 2 o'clock. And uh, again, if you would like to watch this broadcast, Join us at Sunday morning, 9 o'clock, right here on Channel 18 or on YouTube as well. And follow us on Facebook or Instagram to make sure uh, the timings don't change because it is high school football. Things do change. I'm Chris Morris for Dick Herman and the entire crew here at NCTV 18. Thanks for joining us. Once again, the final score, your Nantucket Whalers, 38, Nauset Warriors, nothing. Thanks very much. Have a great weekend.